and uncover your heads. And we will stand and face Jerusalem. Hear, O Lord. Hear, O Lord. When I cry with my voice. When I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. And answer me. And answer me. When thou saidest. When thou saidest. Seek ye my face. Seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee. My heart said unto thee. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Had hide not thy face far from me. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Leave me not. Neither forsake me. Neither forsake me. O God of my salvation. O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother have forsaken me. When my father and my mother have forsaken me. Then the Lord will take me up. And the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way. Teach me thy way. O Lord, and lead me in the plain path. O Lord, and lead me in the plain path. Because of mine enemies. Because of mine enemies. I had fainted. I had fainted. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen thine heart. And he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I just read Psalms, the 27th chapter, verses 7 to 12 and verses 13 to 14. May the Lord add a blessing and re of his holy word in Jesus. Everybody here to the house of Jacob, everybody that's sitting before me as well as those that are following us on the live stream and on the conference call. I want to say welcome to you. Glad to have you fellowship with us uh, today. Now, it is the season. <laughs> so we're going to deal with it some today. And but uh, we're going to kind of work our way around to that particular one, this, this particular one uh, that uh, is coming up in a few days here, that day that they call Christmas, which they say is Christ's birthday, which there is nothing in the Bible to support that, absolutely nothing, you hear me? And when you do your homework, you will find out that it has nothing to do with Christ. It is pagan. So if you want to do your pagan thing, just go ahead and do your pagan thing, but make sure you call it what it is. And it is pagan. It ain't got nothing at all to do with Christ. You cannot find it in the Bible. And then when you don't find it in the Bible, then you go and you do a little research, you find out where it really came from. And that's, we're going to deal with that some today as well. But now, uh, I'll title the lesson today, The Church of God and Its Teachings versus The Church of Rome and Its Teachings. Because when you understand what is going on, you will know that there are, I like to say, two brands of Christianity. Actually, it's a lot of stuff they call Christianity. But uh, I like to use uh, the term two brands of Christianity out there. There's Bible Christianity, and then there's a Christianity that came from Rome. Well, you say, what about all the, the other versions of it? Well, that came from Rome as well. It was handed down from the Church of Rome to other churches. And basically, the same thing that Rome came up with is the same thing that most of these other churches have. I'm talking about the one that calls themselves Christians now. So we are going to uh, deal a little bit, show you some of the teachings of the Church of God, and then we're going to show you some of the teachings of the Church of Rome. And we want to begin uh, this lesson today in Acts chapter 7, and we want to begin reading at verse 35, just to show you first who the church is, Acts chapter 7, and we want to begin at verse 35, because what we are about to read here will tell you where the church got started at. I know most people teach 
that the church got started in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit came down and lit up on the, uh, actually lit up on the apostles. And uh, they began to speak in uh, other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance because the Lord sent the angel to give them a message and it gave them the message in different languages so that they were able to speak this message in different languages because there were many people there that spoke different languages. So the message had to be given to these people in a language that they understood. But now, that is when most people think the church started, on that day of Pentecost. However, they just ignore what it says about the day of Pentecost. They just, only thing that they deal with is, uh, is that the uh, uh, apostles spake in tongues. When they read that, that's, that's, uh, that's all they focus on is that the apostles spoke in tongues. They don't even bother uh, to notice that it was on the day of Pentecost, one of God's high days, that all that was done. And they don't bother to notice when they deal with the tongue, they don't bother to notice either that everybody there understood what was being said in their own language. There was no, wasn't no babbling. You know, they, they read that and they get to babbling. Blah, 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 blah. And they're supposed to be speaking in tongues. No, in tongues is an intelligible language. That's what tongues is, it's a language. But it is one that can be understood. And everybody that was there on that day of Pentecost understood what was being said. But anyway, getting back to uh, this lesson here, uh, we're going to show you where the church got started. did not get started in Acts chapter 2. This is where the church got started. Start reading at uh, Acts uh, uh, 7 and uh, pick it up at verse 35. Go ahead and read. This Moses, who they refused, saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge? Mm -hmm. The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, uh -huh. which appeared in, to him in the bush. Go ahead. He brought them out. After that, he showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. Uh -huh. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you mm. of your brethren, like unto me, him shall you hear. Now, he said, this is that Moses uh, which said unto the children of Israel. So Moses was there in the wilderness with the children of Israel. Go ahead and continue to read. This is he uh -huh. that was in the church. In the wilderness. With now he just told you who he's with. He's with the children of Israel. And this is he uh, that was with the church that was in the wilderness. Who was the church that was in the wilderness? It is Israel. So that is where the church got started. It got started in the wilderness and got started with the nation of Israel. However, there uh, was a mixed multitude. There were maybe a handful of strangers among them. But for the most part, it was a nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. That is when the church got started. Now, Let's go, go ahead and finish that verse, and then we'll move on. With the angel which spake unto him in the Mount Sinai, uh -huh. and with our fathers, which received the lively oracles to give unto us. And he said, with our fathers that received the lively oracles. You know what these oracles are? These are God's divine revelations. Mm -hmm. So now he gave them to Israel, and really it was Israel's responsibility uh, to give them to all of the other nations. But now they are the ones that first received God's lively oracles. Now, let's go over uh, and, uh, to Exodus chapter 20. And I'm going to just show you, you know, uh, uh, immediately after the Lord uh, uh, brought the church uh, uh, out of Egypt into the wilderness, he began to give them instructions mm -hmm. as to how they are to serve him. Because being a servant of God means that you are following the instructions that God has given unto his servants. So immediately the Lord began uh, to give them instructions as to what it is uh, that they needed to do. Now, start reading at Exodus chapter 20, and we want to begin at verse 1. Exodus 20, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Okay, 20 and 1. Go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying. Now the Lord had said in the 19th chapter of Exodus, you know, he told Moses to tell all the people to gather at this mountain uh, called the Mount Sinai. It's also referred to as Mount Horeb. And said he would come down and stand on this mountain 
and he would speak directly to the people himself. And this is what the Lord is doing. That's why it said, and God said unto the people. You know, because sometimes you read, God said unto Moses, tell the people this. Mm -hmm. But now this is God himself, and he's speaking directly to the people here. And God said unto the people, look at what he said. Go ahead and read. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, Go ahead. out of the house of bondage. Uh -huh. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now this one that is doing this, it is the one that later became known as Jesus. That's another lesson for another time. But now what the Lord is doing here, he is giving them the Ten Commandments. Well, I want to skip down to uh, 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 verse 8 because I just want to read this particular one because this is the one that most so-called Christians seem to have an issue with. You understand what I'm saying? They ain't really got no problem with thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not commit adultery and thou shalt not steal and don't do any murder. They don't really have a problem with the those. But this is the one they seem to really have a problem with here. Go ahead and read verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day uh -huh. to keep it holy. Go ahead. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Uh -huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do, no, do not any work. Now the Lord said, not Moses, the Lord says six days do all of thy labor and the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no work. God said the seventh day is the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Thou, nor thy son, uh -huh. nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, uh -huh. thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. Uh -huh. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that th that is in them is, uh -huh. and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now the Lord, he set aside, he sanctified, the seventh day, even in the creation. Mm -hmm. And then he turned around and he made it a part of the covenant because the covenant is these Ten Commandments here. Mm -hmm. And it was made a part of the covenant that at that time was known as the Old Covenant. But then Jesus came and died and that ended the Old Covenant, but it ushered in the New Covenant and the Lord said, under the new covenant, he's going to take them same laws. Instead of putting them on a stone, he will write them in their heart and in their mind. So he didn't do away with the covenant. He didn't do away with the laws when the uh, new covenant was instituted. Mm -hmm. So now, whatever the old covenant said, the same thing is the new covenant as well. The only thing that, that different was that the uh, old covenant was ratified by the blood of animals and the new covenant was ratified by the blood of Jesus. That's why uh, 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 when Jesus came just before he died, he said, this is the blood of the New Testament that is shed for you for the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, uh, he gave the seventh day as the Sabbath day. These are the instructions that God is giving to the church. Now, Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Leviticus 23, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. And then the Lord started to give the church further instructions as to what it is that he wanted them to do. We want to start here at Leviticus chapter 23, and we want to begin reading at verse 1. Leviticus 23, and we'll pick it up at 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. Now this time the Lord is speaking unto Moses, and he is telling Moses what to tell the people. First God said himself directly to the people, and all of the people heard him. Now this time he's telling Moses what to say unto the people. So the law that we are about to read here is not the law of Moses, the law of the Lord that he is giving to Moses and telling Moses to give it unto the people. Make sure that you understand that, and make sure if you ever run across anybody to have any issue, with these laws, as far as them being the laws of Moses, then you need to read them this. Read them where the Lord spake unto Moses and told Moses what to tell the people. That'll sell all arguments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got you to, and, and after that, their issue is no longer with you. Now it is with God. Because the Lord is speaking unto Moses 
and he is saying to Moses what to say to the people. Go ahead and read on. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. Now he said, and speak unto them and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. So now God said these are his feasts. Anybody say anything different, then they got an issue with God. That's who that issue comes. Mm -hmm. If God said they're his, then they're his, uh -huh. okay? So now, if, if they want to argue, just stick this in their face and let them argue with it. Okay. You ain't got to bother. You can just walk away after you stick this in their face. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Which he shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Uh -huh. Even these are my feasts. The Lord said these concerning the feasts of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. Go ahead and read. Six days shall work be done, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Now he said the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. The seventh. Day is the Sabbath. That is the Sabbath that God gave. Okay? Go ahead, read on. A holy convocation. Uh huh. Ye shall do no work therein. Go ahead. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Now, this is the Lord, and He's speaking unto the people here, and He's telling Moses, speak unto the people, and He's giving them instructions as to what it is that He wants them to do, and He said they are even holy convocations, and you shall proclaim them. In their seasons. Go ahead and read. These are the feasts of the Lord. Again, he said it. Go ahead and read. Even holy convocations, uh -huh. which he shall proclaim in their seasons. Go ahead. In the 14th day of the first month at evening is uh -huh. the Lord's Passover. Now, he said it is the Lord's Passover. Go ahead and read. And on the 15th day of the uh -huh. same month Go ahead. is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And he said on the 15th day is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Go ahead and read. Brother. Unto the Lord. Uh -huh. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Go ahead. And the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Uh -huh. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Go ahead. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. And then the seventh day is... And holy convocation. Now, uh, now you know, we, we know when Jesus came and died, that ended the, the offering thing, but that did not end the day. But my point for reading this is just showing you some of the instructions that God gave unto the church and said that they must do these things. And he said on the seventh day, you shall have a holy convocation. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are here on Saturdays as opposed to Sundays, like most other churches that refer to themselves as being Christian. Because mm -hmm. God said that the uh, seventh day you shall have an holy convocation. Go, uh, read verse 9. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Read. Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and say unto them, When ye be come into the land, which I give unto you, and ye shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits uh -huh. of your harvest unto the priest. Go ahead. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. Now he said on the morrow after the Sabbath, so that would be the first day. Because uh -huh. some people have tried to say that because Israel kept, uh, they, they read in the New Testament where Israel kept uh, the day of Pentecost, and they, and they tried to say the Sabbath changed when you got in the New Testament because they started uh, to have service on the first day of the week. They always kept Pentecost on the first day of the week. What are you talking about? Right? Ain't tomorrow after the Sabbath, ain't that the first day of the week? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But that is not the seventh day, is it? Yes, Lord told you what day the seventh day. He said it's the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Then when you got down to Pentecost, because that's what you're dealing with here, it, is, uh, it has always been on tomorrow after the Sabbath, which is the first day of the week. So it didn't change when you got to the New Testament. It was still tomorrow after the Sabbath, which is the first day of the week. Skip down to verse 15. Go ahead and read it. And ye shall count unto you uh -huh. from the morrow after the Sabbath. Go ahead. From the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, uh -huh. seven Sabbaths Go ahead. shall be complete. Uh -huh. Even until the morrow after the seven Sabbaths, ye shall number 50 days. Uh -huh. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Now, you know, here it's called the, uh, 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 the, the, the Feast of Weeks or, or, or the Feast of the Harvest of the First Fruits in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, it's called Pentecost because Pentecost means 50. So now we won't go any further with these days here, but I just wanted to show you a few of the things that the Lord said for the church that they are to do. You understand what I'm saying? And this was for Israel as well as for the stranger that would be a part of the church because the Lord even said to the stranger in Isaiah 56 is that if they must keep the covenant and they must keep the Sabbath from polluting it and take all this covenant, 
covenant and keep their hands from doing any evil. So what Israel had to do, the stranger had to do as well. So if they would come in and become a part of the church, then what applied to Israel, it applied to them as well. But now these are some of the instructions that God gave to the church. Some of the things that God said that they must do if they would be servants. Now, let's go over to Matthew chapter uh, 10, and we want to begin reading at... Uh, 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 verse 11, Matthew 10, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 11. Because I, as I said earlier, didn't nothing really change when you got to the New Testament. Only thing that really changed was that you didn't have to kill animals anymore. That was the only thing that changed. Nothing else changed. You know, the Sabbath, the Passover, the Pentecost, and, uh, and the unleavened bread, and all the rest of them that was written there in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. They still kept them days because they understood, as it is written in the Old Testament, that these things were to be done forever, throughout all generations, in all of your dwellings. Didn't matter if you messed up, got kicked out of the land, got taken into bondage. Once you woke up and found out that you were supposed to keep these days, then you were to start by keeping them. Because Israel got messed up when they went down into Babylon. And then when Ezra and Nehemiah came out, then they searched the books of the law, and they found out that there was certain things that they were supposed to have been doing, and they started doing it. Uh -huh. And that's the same thing that applied with us in this generation as well. You know, we, we didn't have no idea that we was in Israel because we got lost. Uh -huh. Then the Lord started to wake us up, and he started to show us who we were, and start to show us how we must serve him. And once we understood that, then we started to be obedient to the laws of the Lord as well. Now, let's go to uh, 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 Matthew chapter 10. And we want to begin reading at uh, verse 1, Matthew 10. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. Okay, when you get it, go ahead and read, bro. And when he had called unto his to him, his 12 disciples, uh -huh. he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, you know, these are the 12, and this is when he had, uh, elected these 12 here, and they were called uh, his disciples as well as his apostles. Now, and this is what he said unto them. Skip down to verse 5. We won't bother uh, reading the names of them. Go ahead and read. These 12 Jesus sent forth uh -huh. and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, uh -huh. and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Now he said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles, don't go into any city of the Samaritans. And the reason he said no cities of the Samaritans, because initially uh, Samaria was a part of Israel, but then when the ten tribes messed up and got kicked out, uh, uh, then the Assyrians came in, they took Israel out, and they brought in other people there. So Israel wasn't in Samaria anymore. So that's why he's saying, because the Lord first want to give this thing to Israel. Then after that, he's going to give it to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So now Jesus is saying to him, don't go in the way of the Gentiles, and neither in the cities of the Samarians enter ye not. Go ahead and read on. Verse 6. Uh-huh. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, because the Lord, he's going to use this people Israel to carry his message to everybody else. So first... He had to get the church established among Israel. Because, uh, uh, you know, Israel down through the generation, they kind of gotten away uh, uh, from things. Go ahead and read on. And as ye go, uh -huh. preach, saying, go ahead. the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now he says, as you go and preach, saying to the people, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, let's go to Acts chapter 1, and we want to begin reading at verse 1. Acts 1, and we will pick it up at... Uh, at uh, uh, verse 1, Acts 1 and 1, and going to show you that, uh, uh, that, that, that the apostles, they did exactly as they had been commanded. You know, they're going to take this thing first unto Israel, then they're going to take it to the rest, uh, to the uttermost part of the earth. Start reading at uh, Acts 1 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read, brother. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, uh -huh. of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, 
had given commandment unto his apostles whom he had chosen. Now he said, you know, he, he said a former uh, uh, treatise, which is like a writing or a book or something like, uh, 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 have I made with the old theologians up against about what all Jesus began to do and teach until he was taken up. In other words, until he went back to the Father. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. Uh -huh. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. In other words, after his resurrection, he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. Other scripture tell you something like about 500 people saw him after his resurrection. So it wasn't done in the little corner. You know, like we got to... Uh, you know, like, like it got to be all by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Well, did Jesus rise from the dead? Well, well, Joe Blow told me he, re he rose from the dead. I don't know. 500, he made certain that at least 500 people saw him. You understand what I'm saying? At least 500 people saw him alive after his resurrection. So it wouldn't have to be left in the mouth of two or three people. Mm -hmm. So now. He said uh, he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. Go ahead and read on. Being seen of them uh -huh. 40 days. Go ahead. And speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, after his resurrection, now he's walked around with them 40 days. And what did he minister unto them? He ministered unto them the gospel of the kingdom of God. Same gospel that he came with. Mm -hmm. The same that he gave to the 12. And the same that he even gave uh, to the apostle Paul later on. Because Paul did not come with the twelve. He came sometime later. Because when the twelve came on the scene, Paul was a Pharisee and he was persecuting the church. Uh -huh. So now, uh, he said now, he, he showed himself alive by many and foul uh, proofs, being seen of them forty days and preaching things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read on. Verse 4. Uh -huh. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, uh -huh. but wait for the promise of the Father. Go ahead. Which saith, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, uh, you know, he said, now, he, tell, he said to their pop, don't go anywhere until you get some power from on high. And this power from on high is talking about the, the Holy Spirit here. Mm -hmm. So now he said, uh, 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 don't go anywhere until you get some power uh, from on high. Go ahead and read on. When they therefore were come together and asked of him, saying, uh -huh. Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So, you know, they had certain knowledge and they understood that the kingdom was to come to Israel. They understood that because it was written all through the Old Testament. And he, and he said, and they asked him, will you at that time restore again the kingdom unto Israel? He said, I'll get to that later. But uh, that ain't what I'm concerned with now. What I'm concerned with now is you taking this message to Israel and to all of the rest of the nation. Go ahead and read on. Verse 7. Read it. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons uh -huh. which the Father hath put in his own power. Go ahead. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Uh -huh. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the othermost parts of the earth. See what I said? You're going to start at Jerusalem, though. Mm -hmm. He said, you're going to be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. Because this message has to go out through all of the earth. Mm -hmm. But it all had to start with Israel here. Yeah? Because Jesus even said to the twelve, don't go in the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm going to give to Israel, and then it will be Israel's responsibility to give it to everybody else. Now, let's go to uh, Acts chapter 2. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. Acts 2 and verse 1. This scripture they like to read here to say that the church got started here. But now the church got started in the wilderness here. And they like to try and take... They, they, another reason they like to read this and try and take the church out of the hands of Israel and put it in the hands of the Gentiles here. Whenever you see them read this, that is one of the things, that is one of the reasons that they like to try to read it, to take it out of the hands of Israel and put it in the hand of the Gentile. And I'm going to show you on this day of Pentecost, there was not a Gentile in the bunch. Not a single one. Now, if you want to say that this is when the uh, New Testament church got started, well, look at who he started it with. Start reading at 2 and 1. Go ahead and read. 
And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. When the what day? When the, they never, they never even mention it. When they read it, only thing they look for some reading the Bible. <laughs> but they never even mention that it was the day of Pentecost here. Mm -hmm. And when did Pentecost get started? It got started all the way back in the days of Moses, didn't mm -hmm. it? You know, we read all the way back uh, uh, in Exodus and 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 and. Uh, and uh, you can read about it in Exodus, and you can read about it in Leviticus, about this uh, Feast of the Weeks, or the Feast of the Harvest, or the First Fruits, which is the day of Pentecost here. Now, they were still, this is after Jesus done died, now and rose. Uh -huh. They say he nailed it to the cross. Well, apparently he didn't, did he? Because if he nailed it, then the book said that he walked around and taught him 40 days. Uh -huh. Don't you know if he had nailed it to the cross, don't you know he would have told him that? You know, Pentecost coming up in a few days, Y'all ain't got to worry about that no more. I nailed that to the cross. It just said that he walked around and taught them 40 days after his resurrection. And the very first thing they did a short time after he ascended back to the Father, they kept the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Yeah. You know why they kept it? Because it was good throughout all generations in all of your dwellings. Mm -hmm. That's why they kept it. Mm -hmm. They understood the law. Servants of God. Now, these are the people that was first called Christians here. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Christian mean a follower of Christ. These are the people that was first called Christians. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We'll call them the original Christians here. Yeah. Now, here yeah. they are keeping the day of Pentecost. And then Paul came along quite a few years later. Because uh -huh. they all, you know, they all want to ride with Paul. But we're going to read you a little bit later. Well, Paul said, I must by all means get back up to Jerusalem and keep Pentecost. So he, he, he was keeping it too then, right? Yep. Yep. So now, first thing they did was keep Pentecost. And, and that was what they was gathered there for because the law said that they all had to come up to the place that the Lord had chosen on three feast days. That was the unleavened bread, the Pentecost, and the tabernacle. That was the law, and that's why they was gathered. They was not tearing here for any Holy Ghost. Lord just happened to pour out his spirit on them on that day of Pentecost. Go ahead and read, brother. They were all with one accord in one place, uh -huh. and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, uh -huh. and it filled all the house where they were, were sitting. Go ahead. And, they, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Now these cloven tongue like as a fire. He's just talking about angels, and it, and uh, 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 and it set up on each of them. In other words, it came to those that was doing the speaking, not those that was doing the listening, because the Spirit was bringing them a message for them to give the message to all of the other people that was there on that day of Pentecost. Go ahead and read. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they began to speak with other languages. That's what tongues is. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Go ahead and read. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Uh -huh. Now this was noise abroad. Well, and, you, you missed something there, brother. You can't miss that. And now when this was noise abroad. No, you got to back up to verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> it didn't say Gentiles, did it? No. There was dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, mm -hmm. devout men out of every nation under the sun. So they like to read this to say that this is when the Lord took the church out of the hand of the Jews mm -hmm. and put it in the hand of the Gentiles. Wasn't no Gentiles there. There was dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, Devout men out of every nation. Under. Lord, go get to the Gentile because God is not a respecter of person, but he has a protocol. Mm -hmm. There's a way that he chose to do this thing, and that is how it was done. Go ahead and read. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. That, you know, Israel at that time, they had been scattered, and wherever they were, they all, you know, like Israel been scattered today. Uh -huh. You know, you got some Israel in, in, uh, in various European countries. You got uh, Israel down in the Caribbean countries, and you got Israel in this country. And now, if if it was like if it was like it used to be, then the, all these feast days was held 
there at Jerusalem. That meant that all of us would have to get up from wherever we are and try to make it back to Jerusalem. Then if I got there, if I was going to get the message, then somebody would have to be speaking English because that's the only language I kind of speak. <laughs> then you got another brother that come up out of, uh, uh, of, of some of them Caribbean nations where they speak Spanish or something. Then he would have to get the message in Spanish. Then you get some brother from over somewhere in Europe somewhere. Maybe he was born and raised in Germany. He would have to get the message in German. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So there would have to be somebody there giving them the message in all of these different languages or at least interpreting the message in all of these different languages so they all could get them. So now Israel had been somewhat scattered at this time, and they, and, and they, was, uh, and they had all come back up to Jerusalem to keep this day of Pentecost. But what did it say? There was dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. But we see that they were still keeping this Pentecost. Now, let's go over to, uh, let's go over to uh, 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 Acts chapter 9. And we'll pick it up at verse 10, Acts 9. And we'll begin reading at verse 10 because now the Lord, he's going to start to bring this thing to the Gentiles now. Uh, Acts chapter 9. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. And he's going to raise up one to carry this message unto the Gentiles. First, he had Peter to do it. That was just with a handful of Gentiles, meaning Cornelius and his friends that you read about in Acts chapter 10. But Paul is the one that he really raised up to take the message to the Gentiles on a wholesale basis. Acts 9, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 10. Acts 9 and 10. Now, you know, uh, 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 in fact, read verse 1, uh, 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 and then we'll skip down to verse 10. Uh, well, verse 1 and 2. Go ahead and read. And Saul, yet yeah, breathing out threatening. Now, this Saul, that is Paul. You know, he was an Israelite, Saul. That, and in fact, that was uh, Israel's first king named Saul. Uh, and Saul, who, who later became known as Paul. Breathing out threatenings. And go ahead and read on. And slaughter against the disciples of the Lord uh -huh. went to the high priest. Now, Paul and uh, uh, Saul, rather, breathing out slaughters against the disciples of the Lord. Because he was among those that persecuted the church initially. Go ahead and read. And desired of him letters to Damascus, uh -huh. to the synagogue. Go ahead. That if he found any of this way, whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Now then he went to the high priest and he desired in them letters that if he found any that was following Christ, then he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Now, skip down to uh, 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 verse 10. Now this, this, this disciple Ananias, uh, the Lord had called him and uh, told him to go to Paul because cause the Lord, uh, if we had kept reading, the Lord knocked Paul down and blinded him. And, 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 and Paul asked, you know, what did you want me to do? And then he had Ananias to come in and tell Paul what it is that he wanted him to do. Go ahead and read. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, uh -huh. Ananias. And he said, Behold, uh -huh. I am here, Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, uh -huh. and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Uh -huh. For behold, he prayed. Go ahead. And he hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Uh -huh. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man. How much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Now, you know, he questioned the Lord. I, I heard about this man. Uh, uh, you know, all the evil that he had done against the saints uh, that is at, at, at Jerusalem here. But look at what the Lord said about him. Go ahead and read. Verse 14. Read. And, he, and here he have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Go ahead. But the Lord said unto him, uh -huh. go thy way. For he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings, and the children of Israel. Now, but the Lord said to Ananias, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name among the Gentiles, and even among Israel as well. So now the Lord has chosen one that he is going to use to raise up the Gentiles and bring them 
into this word. Now, let's go to uh, 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 Romans chapter 11, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Romans 11, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. And from the time that the Lord started to bring the Gentiles in this, you know, they had this thing now that the Lord have brought us into this thing. He done did away with Israel, and he's turned this thing over to us. You understand what I'm saying? They, uh, 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 they still doing it to this day, aren't they? You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because as I said earlier, they read Acts chapter 2, that said the Lord and took the church out of Israel's hand, and he didn't put it in the Gentiles. They had started way back then saying that the Lord done took the thing out of Israel's hand, and he didn't put it in the hand of the Gentiles, simply because the Lord had started to bring the Gentiles into the And that message still is carried on to this very day. Uh -huh. It is carried on. Uh -huh. Listen at some of your big shot theologians and see what they tell you. Now, start reading at uh, Romans chapter 11 and pick it up uh, at verse 1. Paul set this thing in order right away. Romans 11, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. I say then, uh -huh. have God cast away his people? God forbid. Now he said, have, have God cast away his people? He said, God forbid. Go ahead and read. For I also am an Israelite uh -huh. of the seed of Abraham Go of ahead. the tribe of Benjamin. He called Paul said, I am, I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham and of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people. Go ahead and read. God have not cast away his people which he foreknew. God have not cast away his people which he foreknew. So if, if Paul is having to straighten them out, then apparently they were saying that God had cast Israel away. What? Yep. They were saying that God had cast Israel off and he done put the thing in the hand of the Gentile and Paul had to straighten them out. Skip down to verse 13. Go ahead and read. For I speak to you Gentiles, uh -huh. in so much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine off. And he is the apostle of the Gentiles. God has chosen him. To, he said he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name among the Gentiles. Now, skip down to verse 16. Go ahead and read. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. Uh -huh. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Go ahead. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them. Now, this is what the apostle to the Gentiles is saying to the Gentiles. You have been, God have not cast away Israel. You have just been grafted in mm -hmm. to the church. You have been brought in, and you have become a part of the church. Now, finish that verse, then we'll move on. Go ahead and read. And with them, partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Now, we want to go to Acts chapter 20. And we're going to just read a couple of verses here, Acts 20, and, we, uh, and we're going to begin reading at verse 6. Acts 20, and we'll pick it up at verse 6, and we're going to just show you some of the things that Paul believed and some of the things that he taught, because we are going to show you the things that, uh, that, that uh, uh, Paul, which was an Israelite, an apostle to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. and, and uh some of the things that he believed and some of the things that he taught as well and show you it did not change from what was uh, being taught in the Old Testament. Start reading at, uh, start reading at uh, 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 Acts chapter 20, and we want to begin reading at verse 6. Acts 20, and we'll pick it up at verse 6, 20 and 6. Go ahead and read it, brother. And we sailed away from Philippi uh -huh. after the days of unleavened bread. Wait a minute. He said he sailed away from Philippi after what? The days after the days bread. of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. And when it really said the days of unleavened bread, it was really referring to the uh, Passover as well. You understand what I'm saying? Because by the time they got into the New Testament, they really started to call the Passover and the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread all the days of unleavened bread. Because uh, on the Passover, you had to eat unleavened bread with it. You could still eat leavened bread, but you had to eat unleavened bread with the Passover. And then after the Passover, you couldn't eat any more leavening bread for seven days. You had to eat unleavened bread. So now, they sail away from Philippi 
after the days of unleavened bread. So they were still doing the days of unleavened bread then, weren't they? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Long after Jesus had died on the cross, they were still doing it. Because what the Lord gave for the church to do, it was for every generation, even for this generation. Because it, it had not changed. The Lord said, throughout all your dwellings, in all of your generations, as long as there's a, a generation of Israel, them, them days are supposed to be kept. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you want to. Talk that stuff about uh, uh, Jesus nailing to the cross. Bible very clear about the law that Jesus nailed to the cross. Mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, the angel told Daniel that when Jesus get cut off in the midst of the week, he would call sacrifices and oblation to see. Ain't saying nothing about none of these days. The Bible, if that's not what Daniel said. That's what the angel told Daniel. Mm -hmm. Let's get it straight. Now, uh, 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 so now, after the days of unleavened bread, they sealed Philippi. Skip down to uh, verse uh, 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 16. Go ahead and read it. For Paul had determined to sell by Ephesus uh -huh. because he would not spend the time in Asia. Uh -huh. For he hasted, if it were possible, for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. So now they're doing Pentecost. You know, they're doing the days of unleavened bread. And they're doing Pentecost. But, you know, now, these are Bible Christians here. You understand what I'm saying? People say sometimes, are, are you a Christian? I say, yeah, but, uh, but I'm a Bible Christian, man. Because I follow the teaching of the Bible. There's another brand of Christianity out there that came from Rome, and we're going to show you about its teachings as well. But now, he said, now, so they doing the days of unleavened bread, and they doing Pentecost. And let's go over now to uh, Acts chapter 18, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. And it was not just Israelites that was doing these days. You understand what I'm saying? It was all of the servants of God. It didn't matter if they were Jew or Gentile. It did not matter. If you were going to serve the true and living God, then you had to do all of the things that God gave for Israel to do. God has one agenda. What applies to the Jews, it applies to the Gentiles as well. Let's start reading here at Acts 18 and pick it up at verse 1. Acts 18 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and mm -hmm. came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, uh -huh. born in Pontus. Lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, uh -huh. because that because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them, uh -huh. and because he was was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. Go ahead, me. And by reason, by reason, and he reasoned in the Sabbath, uh -huh. and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. Go ahead and persuaded the Jews and Greeks. Wait a minute. So now you didn't just have the Jews sitting there in the synagogue on the mm -hmm. Sabbath day, did you? Mm -hmm. You had the Jews and the Greeks sitting there. Why did you have them sitting there? Because the Lord had said in the 56th chapter of Isaiah, if the Jews was going to take, a Gentile rather, was going to take hold of salvation, then they had to take hold of his Sabbath and keep the covenant from polluting it. So whatever Israel had to do, the strangers had to do that as well. So now, so now, look at what they were doing here. You know, in the New Testament, you know, they were doing the unleavened bread. They were doing the, uh, uh, the, the, the Pentecost, and they were doing the Sabbath day. And, and it was the seventh day because it did not change. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot find one place in this Bible where the Sabbath day was changed from the first day to the seventh day. I mean, from a uh, seventh day to the first day. Thank you. You cannot find it written anywhere. If anybody tell you it was changed, say, read it to me out of the Bible. It is not there. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to show you later on where that first day uh, stuff came from. But it did not come out of the Bible. In fact, we're going to read a little bit later. You know, uh, uh, at the uh, 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 crucifixion of Jesus, it said that... Uh, the Sabbath day, the day before the first day of the week. I'm going to read that. Now, so now, you know, so they was doing all of the things that had been given to the church 
in the Old Testament, the uh, 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 the uh, uh, Sabbath day and the unleavened bread and the Pentecost and really all of the rest of them as well. Let's go now to uh, Acts chapter 24 and we'll pick it up at verse 12 and show you what Paul said here. This is what Paul taught the Gentiles. You understand what I'm saying? They got some stuff that they done messed up uh, in Paul's writing. But, uh, but when you read and read with some understanding, it is very clear that what uh, uh, that Paul taught the Gentiles all of the things that had been taught to Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, start reading at Acts 24 and begin reading at verse 12. 24 and 12. Go ahead and read. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man. Uh -huh. You know, Paul, uh, you know, he had uh, been accused of, of heresy, so he's just, uh, he's just defending himself here. And he said, and, and, and they didn't find me in the temple disputing with any man. Go ahead and read. Neither raising up the people, mm -hmm. neither in the synagogues nor in the city. Go ahead. Neither can they prove the things where they now accuse me. Uh -huh. But I confess unto thee Go ahead. that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, uh -huh. believing all things that were written in the law and in the prophets. Not only, you know, do I believe in unleavened and Sabbath and Pentecost, but I believe in everything that is written in the law and in the prophets, all of the stuff. He said, he believed in all. He said, that is how I worship my, the God of my father. Mm -hmm. Believe in all things that's written in the law and in the prophets. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 12. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12. Now, Paul is saying this to Timothy, and Timothy is a Gentile. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy uh, 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 chapter 3, and we want to begin reading at verse 12. Because this is what the church went by. These, these, this, this is where they got their instructions from. And that is what he's going to remind Timothy of. This is where you get your instructions from. The instructions that you need, Timothy, to get salvation, this is where you're going to get them from. Start reading at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and pick it up at uh, verse 12. 3 and 12, read. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Uh -huh. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Go ahead. Deceiving and being deceived. And, and we got plenty of that going on. Make no mistake about that. Deceiving and being deceived themselves. Go ahead and read on. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned uh -huh. and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now he's saying to Timothy, he said, but you, you just continue in the things, Timothy, that you have learned and being assured of where you have learned them from. Go ahead and read on. And that from a child thou, uh, ha thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. And from a child, Timothy, you have known the Holy Scripture. Mm -hmm. These are where you got your instructions from. You know, these are where you get your instructions that you need in order to save yourself, in order to be a servant. And if you don't get your instructions from here, then you got some bad instructions. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If if whatever anybody is bringing you, mm -hmm. if they don't bring it to you out of the Holy Scriptures, disregard it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it will take you to a place that you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read on. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. See what I said is the Holy Scriptures that are able to make you wise unto salvation. This is where you're going to get the wisdom you need, Timothy, yeah. in order to save yourself. That, that, that is your guide. You understand what I'm saying? It is the Holy Scriptures. Read on. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Read. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Uh-huh. And it's profitable for doctrine. Wait, wait a minute. It is pro we know what doctrine is. It is profitable for doctrine, which is teaching. Mm -hmm. So your teaching is supposed to come from the Scripture. If you are, if, if you are dealing with Bible Christianity then your teaching going to come from the scripture. But I'm going to show you where uh, the, 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 the teaching of that other brand of Christianity come from. Go ahead and read. For reproof, uh -huh. for correction, uh -huh. for instruction in righteousness. See what I said? For a reproof and for correction and for instruction in righteousness. Go ahead and read. That the man of God may be perfect, uh -huh. thoroughly furnished unto all good works. See, it is given 
that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All your information, all your doctrine, it is supposed to be supported by the scripture. Now, let's go, uh, let's go to Galatians chapter 2. And we'll pick it up at verse 6. Galatians 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 6. 2 and 6. 2 and 6. Because the same message that was given uh, 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 to the Jews is the same message that was given to the Gentile. Lord just used Peter for the most part to give it to the Jews. Because he said to Peter and the rest of the twelve, don't go in the way of the Gentile, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then he told Ananias, I raised up Paul to be a messenger unto the Gentiles. Start reading at 2 and 6, Galatians 2 and 6. Go ahead and read on. But of these who seem to be somewhat, uh -huh. whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. Go ahead. God accepteth no man's person. Uh -huh. For they who seem to be somewhat in confidence, conference added nothing to me go ahead but contrary wise uh -huh. when they saw the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me now who are the uncircumcision that is the gentile and paul is saying here he said now uh he's saying to the galatians when they saw talking about peter and the rest when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision had been committed unto me go ahead and read on as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. As the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. In other words, the same gospel he gave to Paul to give to the Gentiles is the same gospel he gave to Peter to give unto the Jews. Now, when they saw that, go ahead and read on. For he that wrought especially in Peter uh. to the apostleship of the circumcision. Now, the one that worked effectually through Peter to the apostle of the circumcision or to the Jews. Go ahead and read on. The same was mighty in me toward the Gentile. He said, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentile. So it was one message. Mm -hmm. And the message, it was the message that was given to the Gentiles and the same message that was given unto the Jews. Now, let's go to... Uh, 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 that's just some of the teachings of the uh, of the church of God. Now, I'm going to read you uh, something here from a encyclopedia as to what happened shortly after the death of the apostles here. Because the apostles died off. You know, uh, uh, it's not said in the Bible, but this history book said, which is probably close to right if it's not exact. It said that Paul died off around 67 uh, B.C. And, 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 and for the most AD. part, most of them had died off somewhere around that time. Uh, A.D., I'm sorry, 67 A.D. Now, uh, uh, read this, and it is... Uh, it, it is saying here, uh, it's, it's talking about the Catholic Church, and the subtitle here is the early church. Read what's underlined in red down to there, and then read that and that. Okay, go ahead. The early church. Uh -huh. The first 300 years, Catholics traced the beginnings of their church to Palestine. Now, it said the first 300 years, they traced the beginning of their church to Palestine. We're going to find out something about that in a little bit. But, but read some more of that right now. The first Christians were Jews. Uh -huh. believe now they, they right on target with that. Yeah. Uh, the, the first Christian was Jews. Because, you know, we're we, we dealing with the apostles here. And, and, and we know they were Jews. The book is very clear about that. Because mm -hmm. Lord had said, you know, uh, uh, Peter, don't, don't go in the way of the Gentiles. And, you know, let me deal with Israel here. And then I'm going to work my way around to the Gentiles. Go ahead, read. Who believe that Jesus was the Messiah, uh -huh. the Savior, expected by the Jews. Uh -huh. The early church gradually divorced itself from Judaism. Wait a minute. Now, when it said, uh, now, the thing is starting to get away mm -hmm. from Israel. See, it said they divorced oh, themselves. Yeah. You know, when they said Judaism, uh, you know what they're talking about? They're talking about 
all, all the stuff that Paul and them and all of them believed that was written in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. They call, they still call it that Judaism. It ain't Judaism. It's what thus yes, said the Lord yes, for Israel and all his yes, servants do. That's what it is. Yes, sir. But they done hung a Judaism title on it. Mm -hmm. What did the Lord say the feast was the feast of the Jews? Then he said, Amen. Yeah. Then he said the Sabbath was his. Yeah. So why are you calling it Judaism then? So now, you know, Paul and them and the rest of them they started to die off. So now these now the thing's starting to shift toward Rome now. Mm -hmm. So now what they have done is they have divorced themselves what they call, what this book called Judaism. In other words, all of the stuff that God had said for the church to do. Mm -hmm. You know, keep the Sabbath day and the high days and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. The religion of the Jews. Uh -huh. But it accepted the Jewish scriptures, both as a record of God's dealing with his people. And, and yeah, they, they yeah, they, they call themselves accepting it anyway. Mm -hmm. But they once they got hands on, they messed it all up. You understand mm -hmm. what well, I'm showing you that? They messed it all up. Because the Lord said in the first place, he put his words in whose hand? In Israel's right. hand, didn't he? Yeah. He gave his divine revelations to Israel. And the apostle Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, even said it. In, uh, in Rome, he said, what profit in there is being a Jew? He said, much in every way. The main reason is, is that he gave his divine revelations unto Israel. Yeah. So now, Israel is gone. Okay. And it's going to tell you here that Paul died around 67 B.C. You know what happened three years later? Three years later, Israel got kicked out of the land. Mm -hmm. So you ain't got a Jew in the land. Mm -hmm. And the apostles is gone. Now, who's going to teach him? Lord said he put his divine revelation. The teachers, the, the teachers is gone. Mm -hmm. So now they done got hold to it, and they done messed it up good. Go ahead and read on. And as a guide to leading to Christ, uh -huh. St. Paul became the most important person to carry the gospel to the Gentiles, uh -huh. non-Jews, uh -huh. but regarding himself as divinely appointed apostle to the Gentiles. And he was. God said that. He said, you know, I raised him up. To be a, he didn't regard himself, that God regarded him as that. Mm -hmm. So uh, God had to straighten out out of Nile. I done raised him up, man, mm -hmm. to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Then Paul understood that, and he said, I've been called to be an apostle to the Gentiles, and I magnify my office. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read on. Paul founded many churches and exercised authority over them through visits and letters. And he did, you know, all these, what, uh, uh, all these uh, uh, epistles. Here, they are letters. That's what a pistol is. It is a letter. You know, he 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 oftentimes visited all these places. Cause he was just like going around and around and around. Cause he knew if he if it was left up to them, they was gonna mess it up. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes he just went back. He said, "You know, I fear for you all." I'm gonna read you something. Uh, 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 uh. That is Galatians. Hold on one minute. Uh, uh. I didn't even put it in the letter. I, I should have put it in the lesson. I didn't put it in the lesson. Go ahead. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead and read. Go ahead and read. Um, but Paul, you know, on man, in one occasion he was saying, I, I fear for you all, you know, uh, uh, of the days and the times and all of that stuff you keep. These, I've been labored for you in vain. Because, you know, you, 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 you're going back to that old stuff that you was in. Because Gentiles, they had gods. You understand what I'm saying? They weren't dealing with true and living God. They had gods. And, and, and a lot of them. And, 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 and Paul was always saying, I fear for you. These you I, I don't labor in vain. And you go back to the, all that stuff that you was in. Go ahead and read. He also represented their interests with the mother church in Jerusalem. After Paul's death. Now that's the real mother church. You know, you got another church out there that calls herself the mother church. And the Bible even calls her the mother church. But the real mother church mm -hmm. is Jerusalem. That's where it all got started, isn't it? Mm -hmm. then, uh, then the Lord said, uh, go to Jerusalem and Jude uh, Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. Church got started in Jerusalem. People, go mm -hmm. ahead and read. After Paul's death about A.D. 67, uh -huh. the number of Gentile churches continued to expand rapidly. Uh, now, after his death, the number of Gentile churches, it continued to expand 
rapidly, it said. Go ahead and read on. By about 140, the center of Christianity. About what time? 140. So this was like maybe 75 years or so after the death of Paul and after the death of probably the rest of the apostles as well. Mm -hmm. It continued to expand the Gentile churches. Go ahead and read. The center of the Christian Christianity had passed from Jerusalem to... Well, it, the center of Christianity did not have passed. Because the apostles are gone now. Mm -hmm. Israel even gone. Mm -hmm. You know, if Israel had still been in the land, it probably would have been a, a, a few of them around that knew enough. But Israel gone in the bondage, and, and the apostles is dead now. And the Gentile churches, they are steadily grown. So now it said uh, uh, the son of Christianity, it done passed from Jerusalem to where? Go ahead and read. To Christian communities in the cities of Antioch and Syria, uh -huh. Alexandria and Egypt, and especially Rome. And especially who? Rome. Oh, especially Rome. You understand what I'm saying? Because this thing done moved out now. Yeah, the apostles dead, uh, 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 Israel out of the land, and now everything done shifted from Jerusalem into Rome. Now. Mm -hmm. And they came up with their brand of Christianity. They started out, uh, 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 let's, uh, uh, where, where are we? Read, read some more of that. The early Christians relied on the apostles, uh -huh. led by St. Peter. Well, he, he said the early Christians, they relied on the apostle, led by St. Peter, for, you know, for the Jews go, and for the Gentiles, it was Paul. Go ahead and read on. As their authority in settling questions of doctrine and As government. their authority on settling questions of doctrine or teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, they depended on them mm -hmm. because they are the ones that the Lord had given the word to. Then, then he called his 12 together and teach them first. You understand uh -huh. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. They walked around with him for three and a half years. Yeah. So now, they went to them and they relied on them for doctrine. Now they dead. And Israel gone. Go ahead and read. After the death of the apostles, mm -hmm. the church faced the problem of where to turn for authority in such matters. Now, after the uh, death of the apostles, then, you know, that. Who, who we going to rely on now? Because they gone, Israel gone, so who we going to rely on? Go ahead, continue to read what's in red. In the 100s. In the 100s. You know, okay, so now it's because you, you, you're going up like 67, then you go up to 100s and 200s and 300s. Go ahead and read. In the, in the 100s, go two ahead. Development, two developments help solve the problem. Uh -huh. Local councils of bishops strengthen the church unity by discussing the somewhat and somewhat settling many ma many issues from the date of Easter to the immoralization. Well, from the date of who? Easter. Easter didn't get in there now. There, there wasn't no Easter in there when no. the apostles was around. You understand what I'm saying? So no. this stage has shifted now, mm -hmm. all the way from Jerusalem, and Rome done got hands on it now. Mm -hmm. And what have they done with it? They done started to bring in Easter. all of that paganism that they had been worshiping all alone. You understand what I'm telling you? Now, uh, uh, what else did it say? To the immortality of the soul. Now, let's go and read something here. Let's go uh, 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 and read uh, something from a history book called The uh, 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 History of the Italian People here. I just want to skip around and pick up a couple of verses. But we're going to read some here from uh, page 66. And then we're going to read some from page uh, 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 69. I just want you to start right there and read to right there. Catholicism, the version of Christianity accepted by Italians. It is a version of Christianity that had been accepted by the Italians. That is why, you know where Italy is, right? You know where Rome is, right? In Italy, right? Mm -hmm. That is why it is called, it ain't the Catholic Church, it is the Roman Catholic Church because it is impregnated with all of that stuff that came from Rome. Let's just read that. Catholicism was originally and remained for, the consider for a considerable time a specific Italian movement. And that's what it was. It was an Italian movement. Start read that down to there. Go ahead, read. Centered in Rome and strongly impregnated with Roman elements, uh -huh. it qualified its qualifications. Rome is a, 
appropriate. Yes, it is appropriate. Because all of that stuff that Rome that, that Rome had, mm -hmm. they, they, they they made it a part of what became known as uh, uh, of the, the, the Roman Catholic Church. Now, uh, uh, read, read, just, just read that. Just read that, that first uh, sentence there. Go ahead and read. Italian Christianity. Who, who's Christianity? At, not, Italian. not just Christianity or not Bible Christianity, but Italian Christianity. It was an entirely different version of what was written in the Bible. Italian Christianity. Go ahead. Well, that, that's good. Now, now, let's go over here and read a, another thing, and I'm going to show you what they had done. We read this time from page uh, 69 in this same book. Start reading right there. Read to right there, and then read that. By adjusting the Bible. Uh, by to, doing what with the Bible? By adjusting the Bible. Adjusting it? What do you mean adjust? Why, why do you need to adjust the Bible? You know, it is what it is. Just read it and go with it. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? But now, if you want to put your stuff in it, you got to make some adjustments. You understand what I'm saying? Well, it said this. <laughs> but I don't want it to say this. I want it to say that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make some adjustments so I can fit my stuff into it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. To the, in, to the um, intellectual and practical requirements uh -huh. of his time through free and allegorical interpretation, mm -hmm. St. Gregory in his writing. Who is St. Gregory? That's a Roman bishop. Mm -hmm. St. Gregory in his writings. Go ahead and read on. Clarify the distinctive Catholic position. Uh -huh. St. Gregory, who, re who repelled by Gregorian Roman civilization uh -huh. and paradoxal, par paradox, did more than anyone else to facilitate the absorption of pagan resistance into cre Italian Christianity. Now, he did more to absorb paganism yeah. into Italian Christian, that's why he had to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in there. So now he had to make some adjustments so that he might somehow fit it in there. Mm -hmm. So he, he did more than any of the rest of them to absorb pagan residues into Italian Christianity. That's what mm -hmm. you got today. Now, mm -hmm. let's go. Uh, we're going to read a little more history because we're going to be in and out of history. I'm going to tell you that right now. So just get, your, get yourself fixed. Like it or not, you're going to get some, because if you don't get some, there's certain things you ain't going to understand in this Bible. Because mm -hmm. people do not understand that the Bible is a history book as well. You know, in fact, it is the oldest history book on the planet. It is the only one that goes back in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So now, and there's some things that you just not going to understand unless you uh, understand... Uh, 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 some things here uh, 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 from the uh, from history here. I wanna uh, I wanna uh, 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 read you something here from the American People's Encyclopedia, Volume 16. Okay, read what's on the line and read, and read what's on the line and read over there. Go ahead. Roman Catholic Church, mm -hmm. the religious body which acknowledged Jesus Christ is the invisible head uh -huh. and the bishop of Rome called the pope as the invincible head. Now, uh, now they, they, they said that Jesus is the uh, uh, invisible head and the pope of Rome is the visible head. Wow. Go ahead, keep reading. Same the, book. Go ahead and read. The content of the church teaching is not restricted to the writings of the Old and New Testament books. Wait a minute. He said now the content of the Catholic church teaching is not restricted to the Old and New Testament. Well, the church, Paul was telling Timothy that the church, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is good for doctrine and for reproof, and for instruction in right. So the church is teaching, the, the church of God. Now, their teaching come from the scripture. But now, here you got the Roman Catholic Church here. It said that teaching don't necessarily come uh, from the scripture. It is not restricted 
to just the scriptures, whether it is the Old Testament or the New Testament. Go ahead, read. Contained in the Bible. Uh-huh. Catholic tradition is the other source of teachings well, of the church. Well, it's a Catholic tradition is the other source of teaching. So they got some, some Bible and some Catholic tradition. Go ahead and read. And she speaks with the living voice of the mystical Christ, uh -huh. which she has always and ever taught from the beginning is the teachings of Christ. Go ahead. Such teachings is none the less divinely true, even if it happens not to be expressed directly and fully in the word of the Bible. Oh, so they say now, you know, I done made this up. <laughs> but it's true. And you and you you believe it now. Uh, it ain't in the Bible. It, it is some tradition that I came up with. But it's still true now. That's what they're telling you. Go ahead and read. A truth which is clearly a part of Catholic tradition uh -huh. may be officially declared by the Pope or by a general council. In other words, whatever he decides truth is, then that's truth. It don't matter whether the Bible supports it or the Bible opposes it. If he said it, then it's true. That's what, they, that's, that's what they're saying. Go ahead and read. To be an obligatory part of faith. Uh-huh. Of all members of the church, uh -huh. any teaching so declared is what is known as a dogma, mm -hmm. a faith of faith, whether it is it has a source in the Bible or in tradition or in both. Uh -huh. So now, what it's saying is, you know, you, you know the church's teaching comes from the Bible. The, the church of God teaching comes from the Bible. But it's telling you that the Catholic teaching, it, some may come from the Bible, but some come from tradition. In other words, stuff that they just made up. Mm -hmm. Now, we got to read. We got to read something else here. This time, we are going to read from the uh, book called The Religions of the World. And it deals with... Uh, 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 where the, uh, different religions uh, came from, their origin. Uh, uh, We're going to read uh, uh, from page uh, 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 287 first. Uh, uh, I, I want you to restart right there. And, and, and the subtitle here is the Roman Catholic Church. Go ahead, start right there. Catholics also teach that Peter was the founder of the church at Rome. Now, and they teach that Peter was the founder of the church at Rome. That is what they teach. And they even say that uh, he was the uh, 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 first pope. We coming back and read this uh, uh, in, in a minute. I'm going to read the rest of it. But first, I want to read you something from the Bible. Let's go to Romans chapter 1, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Romans 1, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. One and one. There is not any record that Peter was ever in Rome. There is no record for it. Mm -hmm. wow. I'll show you who it was uh, uh, that was the apostle to the Romans. Start reading at Romans chapter 1, and I want you to read verse 1. Then I want you to skip down to verse 5. Romans 1 and 1. Go ahead and read. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Now, Paul said he's a servant of Jesus Christ, and he was called to be an apostle, and he was separated unto the gospel of God. And now this is a letter that he's writing to the Romans. Skip down to verse 5. Go ahead and read. By whom we have received grace and apostleship uh -huh. for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Go ahead. Among whom ye are also the call of Jesus Christ. Now, he's saying to the Romans, he said, you all are also the call of of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and read. To all that be in Rome, uh -huh. beloved of God. Wait a minute. He's saying now to all that be in Rome, beloved of God. Go ahead and read on. Call to be saints. Call to be saints. Read. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. First, I thank my God through, through Jesus Christ for you. Now oh. he's talking to the Romans here mm -hmm. and he said, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of your faith. Go ahead and read on. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Now he's saying to the Romans, your faith has been spoken of 
throughout the whole world. Continue to read. For God is my witness, uh -huh. whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, uh -huh. that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer. Now he's talking to the Romans. He, he's saying to them, without mention, I make mention of you always in my prayers. Go ahead and read on. Make me re request if by any means uh -huh. now at length I, may, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. He said, you know, making my request that by any means I might have a prosperous journey uh, by the will of God to come unto you. This is what he's saying to the Romans. You know, um, uh, my prayer is and, uh, that I'm able to come unto you, Romans. Go ahead and read on. For I long to see you uh -huh. that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. Now he said, I long to see you, Romans, that I might uh, uh, impart unto you some spiritual gift. Go ahead and read. To the end ye may be established. Uh -huh. That is, that I may be comforted together with you Go ahead. by the mutual faith both of you and me. Uh -huh. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, Go ahead. that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you. Now he said, oftentimes I propose to come unto you. Go ahead and read on. But ye, but with with let, but but was let hitherto, uh -huh. that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. So now all Paul is saying is, you know, I'm the one that's been sent unto you Gentile, to you Romans, in other words. Mm -hmm. Now, you cannot read anywhere where Peter ever went to Rome. It was Paul the one that dealt with the Romans as he was the one that dealt with the other Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But now, Catholic tradition says that Peter was the one. Go ahead. Now, start back reading right there. At the, at the start. Go ahead and read. Catholics also teach that Peter was the founder of the church at Rome. Well, no, he wasn't the founder. Who was the founder of the church that was at Rome? Paul was the founder mm -hmm. of the church there. But notice what it said. Catholic tradition says that. Mm -hmm. not, not scripture. Catholic tradition says it. Read it. A belief that is derived from tradition. Oh, oh, they told truth then, huh? <laughs> A belief that is arrived from tradition, not from scripture, but from tradition. Mm -hmm. Because the book is very clear that Paul was the apostle to the Romans. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read on. Not from any New Testament statement. Not from any New Testament. That's what I said earlier. You can't find it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It is not there. Catholic tradition is, see, they saying that because they are trying to say that when the Lord gave the keys to Peter in Matthew chapter 16, that that was the start of the Lord turning the church over to the Catholics. Go ahead and read. They hold that the power Jesus gave to Peter was carried by him to Rome. Where he yeah, that's what they hold, you know. And, and we're going to read the scripture that they use. But that's what they say, you know. Uh, 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 Jesus gave Peter that power. And then Peter carried it to Rome, but Peter was never in Rome. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's how the Roman Catholic Church got started. Go ahead and read on. Where he became the first bishop of the Roman Church. Where he became the first bishop of the Roman Church. Catholic tradition says, not Bible, Catholic tradition. Read some more. And that before he died, he transferred, transmitted his power to his successor. And before he died, they said that he transmitted uh, uh, that power to his successors. Go ahead and read on. Which is the, the ones that we call popes today. Go ahead and read. This power, Catholics hold, has passed down without a break uh -huh. by direct succession of bishops from Peter to the present pope of the Roman Catholic Church. See how they, see how they came up with it? You understand what I'm saying? All tradition, though. No mm -hmm. scripture for none of it. And they even acknowledge there is no scripture for it. But it is tradition. And they say it was passed down from Peter even to the rest of the Pope, even to the one that's in office today. Go ahead, read. Who is the first of all bishops of Rome. Uh -huh. This belief is often called apostle succession. Now, uh, 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 let's go and, and read uh, 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 from page... 289. We're going to read some more out of this book. This time we're going to read some from page uh, 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 289. And, and uh, we're going to read uh, uh, from uh, uh, 
Well, we may as well read this too. Go ahead and read. Start right there. And then read the rest of the way down what's underlined in red. Go ahead and read. The infallibility of the Pope was affirmed by a decree issued by the Vatican Council in 1870. You know, when he supposedly speaks on doctrine, they claim that he is infallible. In other words, he cannot be wrong. You understand? Infallible now. In other words, even when he come up with these traditions that ain't got nothing to do with Scripture, he's infallible, meaning he cannot be wrong. Go ahead. And you got people that believe that stuff. Go ahead and read. This means that he is considered infallible only when he speaks ex cathedra, that is, when he speaks any morals. This dogma is an expression of general Roman Catholic view mm -hmm. that the church is the ultimate authority in religious matters. Now, they say that the church is the ultimate authority in religious matters. But the Bible is the authority oh, yeah. in religious matters. But, you mm -hmm. know, this is what they are saying to the people. And this is what they have always taught the people. Because I've talked to some, and they all believe that whatever the church says, regardless of whether it can be supported by the scripture or not, it is authority. Go ahead and read. The Bible itself is to be interpreted by the church. In other words, only the church can interpret the Bible. If they say it means that, then that's what it means. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, because they, they used to do what they call the masses. They used to do it always in Latin. Mm -hmm. In a language that didn't nobody understand in there except the one that was in there speaking it. Mm -hmm. And everybody in there bowing their heads and saying amen. And they don't know what's being said. They're just going with whatever that they are being told. Did you finish that? Yeah, I finished that. Okay, well, continue to read. The College of Cardinals is the highest. No, no, that's good, that's good. Uh -huh. That's good. Okay. Uh, okay. Now let's now let's go to uh, let's go to uh, 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 let's go to uh, uh, Matthew chapter sixteen. And we are gonna pick it up at verse sixteen. I'm gonna show you where they get this stuff from about uh, uh, the authority was passed down from Jesus uh, to Peter. Peter supposedly passed it down to all the uh, popes. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, and we began reading at verse 16. 16 and 16. Okay, go ahead and read. And Simon Peter answered and said, mm -hmm. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh -huh. Now, uh, uh, Peter's saying to Jesus here, they asked, uh, Jesus had asked him, Who do men say I am? And Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, Bar for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, uh -huh. but my Father which is in heaven. Go ahead. And I say also unto thee uh -huh. that thou art Peter. Go ahead. Upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, this is the scripture that they use uh, uh, to say that, you know, uh, the authority was given unto Peter, and he was made the head of the church, and it was passed down from Peter down through all of the rest of the popes, even down to this very last one. But the Lord is not saying here that Peter is the head of the church. He is saying that he is the head of the church. I'm going to show you where they get it from because, uh, uh, go. did you finish that? Yeah. Up on this rock. Go ahead and read. Did you read that? Yeah. Okay, Perfect. now, let's go to uh, 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 John chapter 1, and we'll pick it up at verse 41. Because he said, up on this rock will I build my church. And I'm going to show you where they get Peter. And, and he said to Peter, up on this rock, I will build my church. But he was not referring to Peter. I'm going to show you how they said uh, that uh, uh, Peter was that rock. Then I'm going to show you who the real rock is that the church was built on. John 1, and we'll pick it up at verse 41. 1 and 41. Okay, go ahead and read. He first finded his own brother, Simon, uh -huh. and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is to be interpreted the Christ. Uh -huh. And he and he brought him to Jesus. Uh -huh. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, mm -hmm. Thou art Simon the Son. Now this is Peter that we are reading about. You know, he's called Simon Peter. And he brought him unto Jesus. 
And, uh, uh, and, and when Jesus beheld him, he said unto Peter, go ahead, thou art Simon, read. Thou art Simon, uh -huh. the son of Jonah. Son of Jonah, go ahead and read. Thou shalt be called Cephas. Thou shalt be called Cephas, go ahead and read. Which is by interpretation a stone. Which is by interpretation, that's where they get it from. You know, they say, you know, because Jesus said, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will be in my church. That's why they get this from, because they said uh, Peter's name was also Cephas, and Cephas, by interpretation, meant stone. So the church was built up on Peter, and then Peter was the first pope, and it was passed down to the rest of the popes. But now, I'm going to just show you who the real church was built on. Let's go to, uh, let's go, uh, to uh, Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse uh, 11. Ephesians 2, and we'll begin reading at verse 11. 2 and 11. Two and eleven. Okay, get it. Go ahead and read. Two and eleven. Read it. Wherefore, mm -hmm. remember that ye being in past times Gentiles in the flesh, uh -huh. who are called uncircumcision. Go ahead. By the by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Uh -huh. That at that time ye were without Christ. Go ahead. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, uh -huh. and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope, and without God in the world. Now, skip down to uh, verse 19, because this is what I really want to get to. Go ahead and read. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, uh -huh. but fellow citizens with the saints Go ahead. and of the household of God, uh -huh. and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now, he said, now this is the church here, and it says you are built up on the foundation of the apostles and of the prophets. Go ahead and read on. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So that is the rock that the church was built on. It wasn't built on Peter. Mm -hmm. It was built on Jesus Christ. He is the head of the church. So that is the stone that the church, or the rock that the church was built on. It was built up on Jesus Christ. Now, let's go and read something here. And once Rome got hands on it, then I'm going to show you they started to change stuff right away. Show you some of the stuff that they changed here. Now, this came from the uh, Cabinet of Catholic Information here. And it's dealing with Sunday. Because the Lord had said uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, seventh day, which is the day that we call Saturday, is, is, uh, is the uh, uh, Sabbath day. Go ahead and read. The divine institution of a day of rest. The divine institution of the, what was the divine institution of the day of rest? Who, who, divine mean God gave it, you mm -hmm. understand? So what day did God give? He gave the seventh day Saturday, didn't he? Now he said the divine institution of the day of rest. Go ahead and read. From ordinary occupations uh -huh. and of religious worship. Go ahead. Transferred by the authorities of the church. Hey, wait a minute. It was changed by... What church are we reading about? The Catholic Church here, Catholic right? Church. It said it was transferred, not by the word of God, but by the authority of the Catholic Church. They transferred it. Go ahead and read. From the Sabbath, uh -huh. the last day. To From the Sabbath, the last day, which is the seventh day. Go ahead and read. To Sunday, the first day of the week. To Sunday, the first day of the week. So what? Where did you get the first day of the week from? It just told you where you got it from. You got it from. Now, this is the, this is the church of God here. Mm -hmm. You understand the teaching of the church of God said the seventh day. But the teaching of the church of Rome said it is the first day of the week. So they tried to change stuff right away. Then they tried to come up with some scripture to support it. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Matthew 28 and verse 1. One of the things they said, it became the first day of the week because Jesus rose on the first day of the week. Somebody should have read them this. Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. 28, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. In the end of the Sabbath. Wait a minute, at the end of the Sabbath it said, right. Go ahead. As it began to dawn, to dawn toward the first day of the week. Wait a minute, so therefore that means that the, the Sabbath was not the first day of the week then, right? Mm -hmm. 
The Sabbath was the day after the first day of the week. Or I should say before the first day of the week. And what was the day before the first day of the week? It was the seventh day. So it didn't change. Once you got it in the New Testament, it did not change. You know, the same thing that the church was doing in the Old Testament is the same thing that they were doing in the New Testament. Go ahead and read on. Read some more. Came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Go ahead. And behold, there was a great earthquake, mm -hmm. for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. Go ahead. And came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Uh -huh. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. Mm -hmm. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. Go ahead, read. And the angel answered and said unto the women, uh -huh. Fear not ye, for I, ha for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Uh -huh. He is not here, Go ahead. for he is risen. As he said, uh -huh. come see the place where the Lord lay. Now, you know, when was this? This was after, as it was done in toward the first day of the week. The angel said he is already gone. So by the time the first day of the week got there, he was gone already. So you cannot use that to say that Jesus rose on the first day of the week. That is what they used to try and support the fact that the Sabbath day became the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. Then they got another one they used, and, and they said that Paul broke bread on the first day of the week. Oh, oh well. And he broke it on the second, too, if he ate some on the second, mm -hmm. or the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth. And if he ate some on the seventh, he broke it then, too. Mm -hmm. But they said nothing about the Sabbath day was changed from the seventh day unto the first day. He didn't rise on the first day. He was already gone when they got there as it was done and toward the first day of the week. Now, let's go and... Uh, Let's show you some more stuff that they changed. Let's read something here from the uh, last two million years. Let's go uh, 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 and read from page 216. Because, you know, we read earlier, you know, after the apostles died all, then they tried to figure out about why, how we going to deal with certain issues as far as doctrine go. You know, how we going to uh, uh, come up with Easter and all of that stuff. When they said Easter right away, I knew they wasn't, it was no longer dealing with the real church. Mm -hmm. It was dealing with wrong way. Start reading here uh, from page 216, and make sure you read the subtitle. Go ahead and read it. Pagan rights absorbed. Pagan, it said, rights absorbed. Go ahead. Well, what are they? Go ahead and read. By a stroke of tactical genius, the mm -hmm. church, while intolerant. Now, the church that it's talking about here is the Roman Catholic Church. It said the church, while they were intolerant to what? Go ahead and read on. Of pagan beliefs. And you know, when it says church right away, you know it's wrong. Because the real church was not uh, a tolerant to any pagan beliefs. Mm -hmm. the, the, the word of God totally opposed any paganism. You understand what I'm saying? So now, when it said the church and it was tolerant to pagan beliefs, you know right away it is talking about wrong. Go ahead and read on. Was able to harness the powerful emotions generated by pagan worship. Uh -huh. Often churches were cited where temples had stood before. Go ahead. And many heathen festivals were added to the Christian calendar. Now it said many heathen festivals was added to the Christian calendar, and it's going to tell you about one of them. Go ahead and read on. Easter, for instance. Easter, for instance. You mean Easter's pagan? It most certainly is. So, but now, where did you get it from? You, no, it was started by the pagans, but then who adopted it and gave it to us in the form that we have it today? You know who did that? Rome did that. Go ahead and finish reading that. A time of sacrifice and rebirth in the Christian calendar. Uh -huh. Takes its name from the Norse goddess Estra. Oh, wait a minute. So you dealing with some other god. See, you know, people, well, you ain't no harm in it. Yeah, it is. You are dealing with another God. Spell Astra for me, please. E O S T R E. E O S T R E. That's when you do Easter, that's the God that you serve. You ain't serving Jesus. Because it ain't got nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? Because first thing is, Jesus didn't die on Good Friday. That's the first thing. 
and he did not rise in the Easter Sunday morning, the, the, the angel told Daniel that the Messiah would be cut off in the middle of the week, and Jesus himself said that he would be in the grave three days and three nights. That kills Good Friday and Easter. So where did you get it from? You got it from the teaching of Rome, that other brand of Christianity that the history book called Italian Christianity or Roman Christianity. Now, let's, since we're here, go to page 144. Since it tears the season. <laughs> and, when I, and, and, and when I say that, I, 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 I ain't talking about the way they put it either. You know, how, the, what's that little saying they got? Uh, uh, the reason for the season. Uh, no, no, no. The reason for the season is paganism. That's the reason for the season. Let's get it straight. The reason for the season ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. If you want to do your pagan, do your pagan. Just say it's pagan. Say, man, you know, I like this pagan stuff. And don't do your pagan. <laughs> but don't try to put Jesus in it because he ain't in it. And don't try to put him back in it because he never was in it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's say now, you know, we need to put Christ back in it. What do you mean back? <laughs> go ahead and read. Uh, read, read now. Now we, we go do, do, do your uh, uh, Christmas now. Go ahead and read. Worship of the old gods did not die out at once. Go ahead. Gregory himself advised his ministry. Now minister here we got Gregory again, mm -hmm. don't we? You know, he was the one that they said did more to facilitate pagan residues in, uh, uh, into Christianity. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Advise his missionaries to leave the pagan shrines alone. You know, leave alone. You know, let, let, let them have their pagan. But we're going to fix it up. Mm -hmm. We're going to make some adjustments so that we'll make it look Christian. Go ahead and read. And to try to introduce... Christian worship only gradually alongside pagan practice. Uh -huh. This mingling of Christianity and paganism is the reason why Christ's birthday is celebrated on December 25th. So he said it's re uh, the reason uh, Jesus' birthday is celebrated on December 25th is because of this mingling of paganism along with Christianity. Let's go to Luke uh, chapter 2. and. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead and finish it. The date of the Pagan's Winter Festival. Oh, it was the date of the Pagan Winter Festival. You know, they all had winter festivals that they kept. All of the Pagans had. You know, some call it Santanea. Some call it uh, 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 the Winter Solstice. And the others, they, uh, and others had other names for it. You know, the Yule. Mm -hmm. So all of the Pagans, they, they uh, you know, they did they, they Pagan festivals around this time of the year. Let's go now to uh, 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 Luke chapter 2. You know, I, I, I was watching the news, I believe it was yesterday or maybe the day before. Uh, it was some group, they, they was calling it what it was. They said, you know, we're going to have our Yuletide celebrations. And, and, and uh, whatever this, this group was, they said they had been doing it for a few years. So, you know, they... We ain't having no, no Christmas celebration. We having our Yuletide celebration. They just call it what it is. That's what it is. So they just call it what it is. Uh, you, you know, this, this, this knowledge here that, that, that I'm trying to pass on to you, many people understand about this stuff. Mm -hmm. But they're going to do it anyway. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Then they're going to do it, and they're going to turn around and call themselves Christian. Well, uh, uh, you ain't no Christian, first of all. Christian means you are follow Christ. And you cannot read anywhere in your Bible where any of the Christians ever kept any Jesus' birthday. Jesus did not say, remember my birth. He said, remember my death. You can't remember it no way because you don't know what it is. <laughs> Start reading at, uh, uh, at, at Luke chapter 2. Pick it up at verse 1. I'm going to just read. There are two accounts of the birth of Jesus, and we're going to read them both. Start reading at, and I ain't going to do no a uh, lot of elaborating. Either. Just start reading at Luke 2 and 1. Go ahead and read it. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus mm -hmm. that the whole world should be taxed. 
and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius, the governor, of, was governor of Syria. Now, that, you know, in other words, the Romans was running things at that time. Go ahead and read. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Uh -huh. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea mm -hmm. unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, uh -huh. because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, uh -huh. being great with child. Go ahead. And so it was that while they were there, though the days were accomplished that she, she should be delivered. Uh -huh. And she brought, first, brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger uh -huh. because there was no room for them in the inn. Mm -hmm. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. And, and, and I kind of understand why there was no room in the inn at that time, too, but uh, go ahead and read. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, mm -hmm. and the glory of the Lord sh shone round about them. Uh -huh. and, there were, and they were so afraid. Uh -huh. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings uh -huh. of joy, go ahead. which shall be to all people. For until you in, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Uh -huh. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. Now, we don't need to read no more. You say anything about any December 25th in there? Nothing, no, sir. right? No, sir. Well, let's go read the other account. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Matthew chapter 2, and we'll begin reading at verse 1, 2 and 1. Okay, when you get it, go ahead and read. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea uh -huh. in the days of Herod the king, go ahead. behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Now, it didn't say three of them either, did it? It just said nope. wise men. Okay, go ahead and read. For we have seen his star in the east, uh -huh. and are come to worship him. Go ahead. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Now, at first... What we read in Luke, that was an earlier account of his birth, and this is a little later account of his birth. Go ahead and read on. And when he had gathered all the chief priests uh -huh. and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Go ahead. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, mm -hmm. for thus it is written by the prophets, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not thou least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor. That shall rule my people Israel. Now, and, and you know, it was written by the prophets that he would be born in Bethlehem. And you can read that in the book of Micah. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, but still, you, you don't see nothing about no dates yet. Go, but read a little bit more. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, uh -huh. inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Go ahead. And he sent them to Bethlehem uh -huh. and said, go and search diligently. For the young child. Go ahead. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I might come and worship him Go also. Uh -huh. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till they came and stood over where the young child was. Go ahead. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. And when they were come in the house, they saw the young child with his mother, Mary with Mary his mother, and fell down, and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God... Now that is good. That you, you read enough. No December 25th, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? These are the only two real accounts that the Bible gives of the birth of Jesus. No December 25th. Mm -hmm. So now, you figure out that it... it there ain't no Bible for December 25th. Now you need to find out where it came from, and we're going to uh, do a, a little reading here. First thing we're going to read here is uh, uh, we're going to read from the uh, 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 World Scope Encyclopedia, uh, 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 volume uh, 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 3. I want you to read what's on the line in red, then read what's on the line in red. Go ahead, read. Christmas, uh -huh. the festival observed by Christian churches on the 25th day of December. Well, we Christians, we, we, we don't observe it. Mm -hmm. But there are 
But most of them, they call themselves Christian. They observe it. And they're going to have the, 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 the big to-do and, 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 and all of that stuff. You know, special service and, and everything. So now, but when it said observed by most Christians, it is talking about those that follow the Christianity that came from Rome. But I'm going to show you here. You know, you deal, when you deal with this stuff, you are dealing with another God. You ain't dealing with Jesus. Go ahead and uh, continue to read. In commemoration of the birth of Jesus Christ. And they do it to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ. But notice what this article says. You go ahead and read. No certain knowledge <laughs> of the birth date of Jesus Christ exists. No, no, and it don't. So now you're going to celebrate his birthday and when you don't know when it is. You understand what I'm saying? You know, the, the only real information that we have about Jesus Christ comes from the Bible. Only absolute true information. We get it from the Bible, and there is no mention anywhere about his birth uh, or the date of his birth. Go ahead and read. The 25th day of December was advocated uh -huh. by Julius the I. Oh, who is Julius the I? Bishop of Rome. Oh, Rome. Came from Rome again, huh? Now you got your Xmas here. That came from Rome as well. You know, all of this stuff that you are getting, it came out of Rome. It is a part of the, of the teaching of the church of Rome and not of the teaching of the church of God. Go ahead and continue to read. From 337 to 352 uh -huh. as the most suitable time to commemorate the birth of Christ. Oh, you mean some 300 and some years after the birth of Jesus Christ, a Roman bishop decided we should do this thing on December the 25th. 300 and some years after his birth. We will celebrate his birth on December the 25th. Go ahead, read. This claim was strengthened by the Church of the East, uh -huh. which held to the view that the baptism took place on January 6th. Uh -huh. So now you go from December the 25th to January the 6th, and then that's how you come up with your 12 days of Christmas. You, 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 you remember that. You, know, when you, when you, you remember back when you was a kid, y'all dealt with that. Go ahead and read the day was finally placed on December 25th, uh -huh. which made it possible for all nations to observe a festival of rejoicing. Mm -hmm. that the shortest, that's the shortest day of the year uh -huh. has passed. Go ahead. Moreover, the newly converted peoples found it, it convenient to get a kind of substitute for uh, their the, own. The, 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 the ones that supposed to have been converting to, you know, they was, they, the, even though it was Roman Christianity, they were still referring to it as Christianity. Mm -hmm. And the people that wasn't a part of the Roman Christianity, they were still referring to them as being pagans. Mm -hmm. So now they said, we, we got to convert these pagans over to our brand of paganism. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Well, they're read all I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> For their own original celebrations uh -huh. of the solstice. Go ahead. Yes, Did you finish that? Yes, that's yes, good. So now they, you know, yes, they, they are, they are, they were dealing uh, 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 with, with with the uh, solstice. Let's mm -hmm. read. I, I got a, a, a lot of them uh, that's dealing with this uh, 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 Christmas thing, but I'm gonna read. Uh, I'm gonna read just one more here, and and that's the uh, from the uh, World Book Encyclopedia. Cause every book you pick up, it tells you about it. So we're going to just read this one from the World Book uh, Encyclopedia, and uh, well, this time from Volume 3. But uh, just read what's underlined in red there, and then I want you to come back and read what's underlined in green last. Go ahead. Go ahead. No one knows the exact date of Christ's birth, uh -huh. but most Christians observe Christmas on December 25th. Uh -huh. On that day, many go to church where they take part in special religious services during the Christmas season. Uh -huh. They also exchange gifts and decorate their homes with holly, Go ahead. mistletoe, and Christmas trees. Uh -huh. The word Christmas comes from Christy Massey, mm -hmm. an early English phrase that means Mass of Christ. Go ahead. The well, he never had a mass, but go ahead and read them. <laughs> the, story, uh -huh. the story of Christmas 
comes chiefly from Gospels of St. Luke and St. Matthew in the New, New Testament. And those are the two that we read. Nothing about no December 25th, did it? Go ahead, continue reading that. The first mention of the celebration of Christmas uh -huh. occurred in A.D. 336. Again, you know, they decided uh, some 300 and some years after his birth that they would do it on December 25th. Go ahead and read. In an early Roman calendar, uh -huh. which which in, indicts, mm -hmm. indicates uh -huh. December 25th as the day of observance. Go ahead. The celebration was probably influenced by pagan, unchristian festivals uh -huh. held at that time. And it was. Everybody's saying the same thing. Go ahead and read. The ancient Romans held year-end celebrations to honor Saturn. Uh, who is Saturn? That's some pagan god. That's mm -hmm. one of their gods. Mm -hmm. you, know, so, you know, they was doing that thing long before Jesus even came. You know, they were doing Saturn, and and uh, uh, and they were doing the Winter Solstice, and, and some other god is going to name here that mm -hmm. they was doing as well. Go ahead and read. Their harvest god. Uh, oh, that was, you know, because they had a god for everything. Yep. You know, they had a harvest god, a rain god, a snow god, or this god, or that. Everything, they had a god. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read them. And Mithras. Uh, and, the, oh, that's another one. They mm -hmm. had Mithras. Okay, go ahead. The god of light. Oh, they had, the, this one was the god of light. Okay. Various people in Northern uh -huh. Europe held festivals in uh -huh. mid-December uh -huh. to celebrate the end of the harvest season. Go ahead. As part of their celebration, uh -huh. the celebrations, the people prepared special food, uh -huh. decorated their homes with greenery, uh -huh. and joined in singing and giving gifts. Thus, custom gradually be became part of the Christmas celebration. See these pagan uh, 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 celebrations that they did. Eventually, it became a part of the Christmas celebration. Read, read, and then we come back to that. Go ahead. In the 1800s, mm -hmm. two more Chris Christmas customs became popular. Go ahead. Decorating Christmas trees and sending uh -huh. Christmas cards to relatives and friends. Go ahead. In the United States and other countries, Santa Claus replaced St. Nicholas as the symbol of gift giving. Okay. You know, you know about Santa Claus, right? You know, they told you about him soon as... As soon as you came out the womb, they told you about him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he came from a, 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 a Roman bishop as well that was called St. Nicholas. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, he was supposed to have um, uh, been good about giving gifts unto children. But go ahead, read some more. The popularity of Christmas grew until the Reformation. And, and you know what a Reformation is? That is when uh, uh, you had the uh, uh, Protestant movement. That is when you had uh, uh, the, the split in the church. Split in the Catholic Church. There was some uh, bishop that removed themselves from the Catholic Church, and they started what became known as the Reformation or the Protestant movement. And it said each tradition continued until then. Go ahead, read. A religious movement of the 1500s. Uh -huh. The movement gave birth to Protestantism. That movement gave birth to Protestantism. Go ahead, read. During the Reformation, many Christians began to consider Christmas a pagan celebration. Now, it said during the Reformation... Many people that was calling themselves Christian, they knew it was pagan. You understand what I'm saying? Because they had done their homework, and they knew it was pagan, and they started to consider it as being a pagan festival that it was. Go ahead and read. Because it included non-religious customs. Uh -huh. During the 1600s, because of these feelings, Christmas was outlawed in England. They said they, they had even outlawed it in England, and they had even outlawed it in some states in this country as well. Go ahead and read that. And in parts of the English colonies in America. Now, in parts of the English colonies in America. They knew it was pagan, and they was trying to be Christian. Uh -huh. So, And they knew they, that this stuff was paganism, so they had outlawed it for a time, but it came back. Go ahead and read. However, people continued to exchange Christmas gifts uh -huh. and soon started to follow the old customs again. And they went right back to it. Mm -hmm. But it had been outlawed by some that was calling themselves Christians even in this country, because they knew that that stuff was all about paganism. Now, let's go and read something here. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 10, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. We're getting there. Y'all ain't got a whole lot longer. Jeremiah chapter 10, and we'll pick it up at verse 1, 10 and 1. Because this stuff had to do with dealing with pagan deities. You understand what I'm saying? You were dealing with the Worshiping of the sun, S-U-N, sun. And you were dealing with uh, worshiping Saturn. And this other god they named Mistra, whoever she is, or what. 
But uh, 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 but you, that's what it was about. You were dealing with pagan gods. You understand what I'm saying? We didn't bother to read it because I didn't want to read you every article that I had on this. But it, it, you know, some of these articles it talked about, well, in this article, it mentioned about the trees. But I'm going to show you. When they was doing these trees, they was dealing with pagan gods. Mm -hmm. And they was doing them long before Jesus came in the flesh. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 10 and pick it up at verse 1. 10 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Now, uh, now the Lord is saying to Israel, he said, you hear the word that the Lord speak unto you, O house of Israel. There are some customs that's going on among the nations, and I don't want you to learn them. And not only is this for Israel, but this is for everybody that's going to be a servant of the true and living God. Now he's saying, don't learn these ways. Go ahead and read. Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. learn not the way of the heathen, Go ahead. and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, uh -huh. for the heathen are dismayed at them. Now he said, don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathens are dismayed at Because, you know, they was always worshiping the sun and all of that stuff, and the moon and the stars and all of that stuff. The heathen, they was always doing that. And the Lord said, hey, you know, they don't be, uh, don't be like them. Don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen. They are dismayed at them. Go ahead and read on. For the custom of the people are vain. Now the Lord said that the custom of these people, they are vain. Go ahead and read. For one cut off a tree out of the forest, uh -huh. the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Now, you know, uh, uh, this is 600 years before Jesus. And no telling how many years before that. Mm -hmm. But we know 600 years at least before Jesus, you know, they was doing this thing with the tree. And the Lord is saying, don't learn these customs because they are vain. Go ahead and read on. They deck it with silver and with gold. And he said they deck it with silver. Well, ain't that what they do now? They, you know, they go cut it out of the forest. Or they go now to the, to the Christmas tree lot. Where somebody else cut it out of the forest. You two ladies go cut it yourself so you went and bought you one. <laughs> or you went to uh, 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 your, your, the store. And, and bought you an artificial one. Right, right. But you do the same thing with it, don't you? You deck it with silver and you deck it with gold. Now, this is some 600 years before Jesus came and the Lord is saying to Israel, don't learn these customs. They are vain. One, take a tree out of the forest and he deck it with silver and with gold. And what else do we do with it? Go ahead and read on. They fastened it with nails and with hammers. That it moved not. Well, this is before they came up with the, with the Christmas tree stands. <laughs> now you don't nail it to the floor. Now you, got, you buy you a stand. But, but it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. You got the tree. You done decorated it. You got it sitting there. And the Lord done said, oh, don't learn these customs because they are vain. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm going to show you that this was all about dealing with some pagan gods. That's what it was about. And you say, well, ain't nothing wrong with it. You know it's good for the kids. It's good for you, too. You let somebody don't give you a Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> when they get through telling you about yourself, <laughs> I thought it was for the kids. <laughs> yeah, okay, for the kids. Go ahead and read. The Lord said it is vain. And he said, do not learn them. Go ahead and read. They are upright as the palm tree, uh -huh. but speak not. Go ahead. They must needs be born uh -huh. because they cannot go. Go ahead. Be not afraid of them, uh -huh. for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Now he said they can't do evil. And then the, the tree can't do nothing, but it's what the tree represents. That's why the Lord said, do not learn these customs, because they are vain. Skip down to uh, 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 verse 8. Go ahead and read. But they are altogether brutish. You know what brutish mean? Brutish mean showing lack of reasonable intelligence. You understand what I'm saying? He said this stuff is altogether brutish. And it is brutish. How brutish can it be? How unintelligible can you be? You, go, you done told your child now, the day they came out the womb, that some big guy, Gonna go all over the world on some flying reindeer. Gonna land on your roof with a big bag 
He weighed about 600 pounds, and he's going to come down a chimney about this big. You started that the day they came out the womb. And if that ain't brutish, I don't know what it is. Then you said, because I ain't brutish like you, that I'm in a coat. I got some intelligence anyway. You understand what I'm saying? I, 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 I well understand. I, it didn't take me long to figure out there was something wrong with that story. Even when I was a short, even though I rode with it, I wanted to get me some stuff. But it, it didn't take me long to figure that one out. But the Lord said it is altogether brutish. The, 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 the stock is a doctrine of vanity because this had to do with worshiping pagan deities. You understand what I'm saying? Because the Lord talked to Israel about it in another place in the scripture. You know, he said, you go, you cut down a tree, you take part of it, and you, and, and, and you cook with it, and you take part of it, and, and, and you warm yourself with it, and then you take part of it, and you make you a god, and fall down to it, and said, deliver me. If that ain't brutish, I don't know what it is. You done made you a god out of a tree that you just cut down, and you're going to ask it to deliver you. The Lord said it is all, they, he said, they're all together brutish. Go ahead and read on, verse 8. And foolish. Uh -huh. the, stock of, the, the stock is a doctrine of vanity. See what it said, the stock is a doctrine of vanity. I want you to skip down to uh, verse 14. Go ahead and read. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Uh -huh. Every founder is confounded by the, by the graven image. See what it said, every man is brutish in his knowledge. If that, if, if that ain't showing lack of reasonable intelligence, I don't know what is. He said, every man is brutish in his knowledge, and, the, and, and every founder is confounded by the graven image. That's what you're dealing with. You know, because then we read when they're doing all this stuff before Jesus even came in the flesh, mm -hmm. that they were doing it uh, with Saturn and Mistra and, 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 uh, and, uh, and the Lord. worshiping of the sun and all them other gods, and all of them had they they pagan festivals that they kept around this time. Go ahead and read. For his molten image is falsehood, uh -huh. and there is no breath in them. See what it said? A molten image is falsehood, and it ain't no breath in them. Go ahead and read on. They are vanity uh -huh. in the work of every of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. See what it said? He said they are vanity and the work of errors, and in the time of visit, they know the Lord let you know, in the time when he make his visit, they all gonna perish. Now, uh, uh, let's go to. Uh, uh, so now you had this this uh, this tree long before even the birth of Jesus. Long before you had it. This is what the pagans did. Now let's go. Uh, uh, let's go. Uh, 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 Revelation chapter seventeen. We getting there, y'all. We ain't got a whole long time to go yet. Revelation chapter seventeen. And we'll pick it up at verse 1, Revelation 17, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. 17 and 1. You know, this, the, the one that we are reading about here, this is the one that gave you all this stuff here. And some more stuff, too. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we usually deal with... Uh, some of it in their season. You know, we deal with Halloween and, and, and all of that stuff because that's, that's a part uh, of it as well. But now, Revelation 17, and start reading at uh, verse 1, 17 and 1. Go ahead, read. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, mm -hmm. and talked with me, saying, Go ahead. Unto me, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now he said, I'm going to show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth up on many waters. I, I am going to, uh, 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 well, go ahead, read. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, uh -huh. and the inhabitants of the earth have been 
made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now he said the kings of the earth, they had committed fornication with this woman, and the inhabitants of the earth, they have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And this drunk, it ain't talking about alcohol drunk. It's talking about that kind of drunk that uh, 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 Isaiah spoke about in the uh, uh, 28th chapter or the 29th chapter of Isaiah. It said they are drunk but not with wine, and they stagger, but not from strong drink. And it went on to tell you about how, uh, you know, you give the learned man the book and tell him to read it, and he said, I can't read it uh, uh, because uh, it is sealed unto me. And then you give the unlearned man the book and tell him to read it, and he said he can't read it because he is unlearned. He said, therefore, what you are getting are the precepts of men and not the word of God. So now, that's what, that's what uh, these people here are being fed. They are being fed this wine that is the doctrine of men and not the word of God. Go ahead and read. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Uh -huh. And I saw a woman sitting on the scarlet colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, uh -huh. having seven heads and ten horns. Now this clearly identifies the Roman Empire. We got a lot of other stuff, but we ain't got time to give you all that in, in this lesson. But now, let's, let's uh, 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 skip down to uh, verse 15, and we'll pick it up uh, well, right there, verse 15. Go ahead and read. And he said unto me, uh -huh. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, mm -hmm. are peoples and multitudes, nations and tongues. So now the waters that that woman sat upon, it was people, it was nation, and it was multitudes, and it was tongues. Now, skip down to uh, verse 18. And let's see who uh, this woman is here. Go ahead and meet. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Now he said, that woman that thou sawest is that great city that reigneth over the kings of the earth. And that great city is none other than the Roman Empire, uh, 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 Rome, I should say. Uh, uh, and, and, and it is dealing with this religious government that came with the Roman Empire. Read you something here about this religious government here. Uh, uh, we, this came from the American People's Encyclopedia. I want you to read that and read it, then flip it over and read. Papacy. Papacy. The, the term. This is a religious government here. And this religious government is the government of the uh, Roman Catholic Church. Papacy. It's going to tell you. Go ahead and read. The term papacy designates the office of the Pope, uh -huh. the Bishop of Rome, Go ahead. as the head of the Catholic Church. Uh -huh. The word Pope, Latin, Papa, comes from the Greek term for Father. Now, you, and, 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 uh, and, and that's, that's where it comes from. Even, even his, his, his title is out of order. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said, call no man Father, didn't he? And he ain't talking about your Father like that begot you. He's talking about like your, uh, the, the one they referred to uh, as, as, as uh, their spiritual father. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it, and another title he took on well, as well is a uh, big car of Jesus Christ, which means the replacement for Christ. I can see how he going to deceive the world. That's right. mm -hmm. when, he, when he sit in the temple of God and declare himself to be God, he done already taught you that in his doctrine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They already... You know, the, them ones, them hardcore Catholics, they already think he got. Right. Mm -hmm. Boom, he got them. He ain't got, he ain't got to do nothing with them. They, they just going to fall right in line. Now, uh, 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 well, we, we read that from another article. Go ahead and read this right here, Papacy. Go ahead. Papacy. Uh -huh. The system of government of the Roman Catholic Church uh -huh. with the Pope as supreme head is called papacy. Now, you know, this government, this is this, uh, 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 this, this, this woman that you're reading about here because that office sits in Rome. This is the government that you're reading about. In the seventh chapter of Daniel, it is talked about, and it is called the little horn. Go ahead and read on. The word papacy also refers to the office of the Pope. Now, it refers to the office of the Pope. Go ahead and read on. The congregations, tribunals, and offices in Rome through which the Pope governs the church make up the, Sir the Syria. Uh -huh. The Pope seats 
seats of authority is in Rome. Uh -huh. And that's where it is. It, it, the seat of authority, it sits in Rome. You know, this is that uh, woman that sits up on many walls because its authority is people. He, he, he has authority over peoples and nations and multitudes and tongues. And I guarantee you, everywhere you go, you're going to find them there. Mm -hmm. You go to the darkest part of Africa, and you're going to find them there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read on. It is called the Apostle, uh, Apostles' Sea, uh -huh. or the Holy Sea. Oh, the Holy Sea. You know, he got it. He written, he wrote it, Holy. They got it written, Holy Sea, S-E-E. -E. But now, if you put a D on that, what do you have? Holy Seed, don't you? And who is the Holy Seed? That is Jesus. But he said he is the big car of Jesus. He is the replacement. Boy, I'm going to tell you, they be playing games big time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. The Pope lives in Vatican Palace. Now, he said he lives in Vatican Palace. And Vatican City is really a city within a city. Go ahead and read on. Located in the independent of Vatican City. Uh huh. Vatican City lies within the city of Rome. And it lies within the city of Rome. And he is the head of this government that is within a government. You understand what I'm saying? So now, this is uh, this woman, and this is that beast uh, that carried her. Now, let's go to, uh, 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 let's go back to uh, 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 Revelation chapter 17 and pick it up at verse 3. You're almost there, y'all. I just did a bit more. Uh, 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 Revelation 17, and start at verse 3. 17 and 3. Okay, go ahead and read. So he carried me away in the spirit mm -hmm. into the wilderness, and I saw a woman go ahead. sitting upon a scarlet-colored beast mm -hmm. full of the names of blasphemy. Now he said, I saw a woman, and she was sitting upon a scarlet-colored beast full of the names of blasphemy. Who is this woman? The woman is the church. And, 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 and the beast that she's sitting on is the uh, uh, political government or the secular government. Go ahead and read on. Having seven heads and ten horns. Read. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, uh -huh. having a golden cup in her hand. Go ahead. Full of the abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And you know what that golden cup is? This, this is some of the stuff that was in this cup right here. You know, all of that bad doctrine that the world have become drunk from. And the world is drunk from it, too. The, you know, like a drunk person is somebody that's sort of unreasonable. Mm -hmm. And this stuff that, 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 that this woman has given you, it is totally unreasonable. You understand what I'm telling you? Go ahead and read some more. Verse 5. Read it. And upon her forehead was a name written, uh -huh. Mystery. Babylon the Great, Go the ahead. mother of harlots, uh -huh. and abominations of the earth. It's a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. Let's read some here from the uh, Universal Standard Encyclopedia, and I am going to uh, uh, show you. Uh, it said that, that, that she is the, uh, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. First, but, uh, 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 first, we want to read something first, though, from the uh, uh, religions of the world. It's over here, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, here it is here. And we're going to read from page 299. Page 299. You're almost there, people. Just hold on. Page 299. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. We'll start right there. Why not? The Catholic Church uh -huh. organized the medieval Inquisition in 1229. Now, it's, uh, well, you, you, uh, you, this, this is part of their history they like to keep undercover here about the, uh, what, they, what was called the Holy Inquisition. Wasn't nothing holy about it, though. But it was called the Holy Inquisition, and what they did is the same thing they're going to do again, and, and, and that is uh, it, it, in certain parts of Europe, at that time, either you became a Catholic or you was punished. Mm -hmm. And many times you were put to death. Well, that is going to return. Read, just stop for one minute and read verse 6. And then we'll get back to that. S 17 and 6. Go ahead and read. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. He said, I saw this woman. She had been drunken with the blood of the saints. 
and uh, she had been drunken with the blood of the saints. Th this is really end time stuff, but it started with the Holy Inquisition. He said, I saw this woman drunken with, because it's going to happen again in the end time. That's why the book said, uh, uh, you know, when this, when this uh, uh, government move and set up in Jerusalem, that you ought to flee into the mountains because it will begin a time of trouble like there has never been before or shall ever be again. And you don't want to have to deal with that mm -hmm. because, again, the woman will be drunken with the blood of the saints. Go ahead and read on. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. You know what a martyr is? A martyr is one that dies for the faith. Mm -hmm. There was some that stood up and gave up their life for the faith. You understand what I'm saying? And that is going to come about again. But now, let's go back and read uh, 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 about this. Well, read, read where, we, where we stopped off at. I, that ain't what I really wanted to get to. We're going to get to that in a minute. Go ahead. In an effort to exterminate dissident movements, mm -hmm. the, ca the Spanish Inquisition. In, in, in dissident, what they consider dissident movement. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You a Catholic boy? No. Cut it in. You a Catholic boy? Yeah, I'm Catholic. I'm Catholic. I'm Catholic. Mm -hmm. Go. Go. That's how it was. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Anybody that didn't want to become Catholic, they were set up for punishment. And the punishment varied to the point of even putting you to death. Go ahead and read. The Spanish Inquis Inquisition, organized in 1472, uh -huh. aimed to restore and preserve the unity of the church. Uh -huh. But the methods employed were at times extreme. Mm -hmm. And the Inquisition was the cruelty constitute, constitutes a chapter of church history that Catholics now look back upon with regret. Uh, yeah, okay. Many, many earnest Catholic Christians who re refused to re recant were put to death, mm -hmm. had their property confiscated, or were punished in other ways. Mm -hmm. Although these severe methods may have succeeded, succeeded in achieving um, Protestant itself. Mm -hmm. For example, by an effort to reform the Roman Catholic Church, yet it, it was the harshness that it encountered in, the, uh, in this attempt that led to complete break with the mother church. Now, with the who church? Mother church. The mother, who's the mother church? Now, you got this, this you know, it said that that woman was the mother of Hylos, didn't it? Mm -hmm. But who is it that's called the mother church here? The Catholic you know, church. Uh, it, it's the Catholic the, church. The you know, church. Uh, uh, the... The real mother church is uh, was Jerusalem, mm -hmm. but now with with this with this brand of Christianity that came from Italy or Italian brand of Christianity, she was considered the mother church. But what did it say about that woman in the seventeenth chapter of Revelation? She is the mother of Hala. Give us the subtitle. What we read here? Protestantism. Protestantism. Go ahead, and finish that. And the formation of independent Christian bodies. Uh -huh. John Wycliffe. 1320 to 1384 mm -hmm. of England, one of the pioneers of the of rep reformers made a translation. Now, that's good. Now, that's good. Now, so in other words, she was the uh, mother church. She was called the uh, mother church. And who was the, because uh, if, if she had, if she was the mother, then that means she had some, 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 some daughters then, didn't it? And who was the daughters? They were the Protestant, Protestant. churches. And I'm going to just, uh, uh, I'm going to just read you. Just uh, the name of a few of them here. Uh, 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 this came from the Grolier Encyclopedia here. Read what's on the line and read, and then just run down that list a little bit there. Adventists, mm -hmm. Baptists, Brethren. No, no, read what's on the line and read. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The official uh, or Pro Pro Protestant churches. Go ahead. The official or accepting name of major Protestant denominations. Now, it's, it's there, not with all of them, but some major ones. Go ahead, read. Are given here. Uh -huh. In many instances, there are several kinds of church bodies using the same name in some, in some form. Go ahead. Adventists, uh -huh. Baptists, Brethren, Christian churches, Disciples of Christ, mm -hmm. Church of Christ, Scientists, mm -hmm. uh, Church of England, yeah. Church of God, yeah. Church of Nazarene. Uh -huh. Friends, Society of Quakers, uh -huh. Jehovah's Witnesses, uh -huh. Latter-day Saints, Mo um, Lutheran, uh -huh. Mennonites, uh -huh. Methodists, uh -huh. Morvenians, uh -huh. uh, Pentecostals. Now, you get the picture. You get the picture. You understand what I'm saying? She was called the Mother Church. Mm -hmm. 
and the great whore, and they were called harlots. Why? Mm -hmm. Because that same old doctrine mm -hmm. that she came up with is the same doctrine that she passed on down to her daughters. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, well, I'm a Baptist. Well, you do Christmas, don't yep. you? Where'd you get it from? You didn't get it from the Bible, did you? Nope. Well, I'm a Methodist. Well, don't you do Easter? Yeah. Where'd you get it from? You didn't get it from the Bible, then. Where'd you get it from? You got it from your mama. That's where you got it from. Mm -hmm. So now, here you have it. But now, I'm going to show you what the Lord said uh, that uh, his servants are supposed to do, or those that thrive to be his servants. Go to Revelation chapter 18. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. This will be last. Go ahead. And after these things, uh -huh. I saw another angel come down from heaven, uh -huh. having a great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. Uh -huh. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Go ahead. Babylon the great is fallen. Uh -huh. It's fallen. And it become the habitation of devils. Well, it become the habitation of who? Devils. Of devils. Go ahead and read. And you know, uh, Paul said something. Uh, 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 to the Gentiles in, 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 in Corinthians. He said they worship devils and not God. Because all that stuff that they have given unto the world, especially coming from Rome, it was all dealing with some other God other than the true and living God. Go ahead, meet on. And the whole, and the whole of every foul spirit. Uh -huh. and he said it, it become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit. Go ahead, meet on. And the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Go ahead, meet. For all nations have drunken of the wine and of the wrath of her fornication. And they have all nations have drunk of this wine. Yeah, and, and we have too. I know I drank of it back, back, way back. <laughs> I, I never was. I didn't become big on religion until I got into the real thing. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But, but I, I hit the cup back back then, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I did me some Christmas, I, I wasn't real big on it like some people, you know, some people, they real big on it, they got to have trees and, 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 and everything, the yard got to be decorated with everything, and a friend of mine that, that I was raised up with as a kid, I, I never went to her house, but they told me that she, she would have a, a big Christmas party, and, and she would have Christmas tablecloths and bed spreads and everything, you know. <laughs> I, I never was in it like that, you know what I'm saying. I just give me a gift and, you know, let me party a little bit. And, you know, I'm cool. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, 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 but all of us can hit this cup at some point. You know, I... I, I wasn't no big church person from the time I was a kid and, and, and was made to go. But uh, uh, I might would show up on Easter, though. You know, that, that would be about it. I'd make my annual trek on, on, on Easter, and that was it. Go ahead and read. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication uh -huh. with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. See what it said, the kings of the earth. They have, uh, 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 they, they have been made drunk through her wine, and the merchants of the earth, they have been made rich through her delicacy, and they do. That's why, they, they, you know, they, they, they used to start uh, 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 Black Friday, what they call it. Now they, st and, and, and now they start, uh, what, around uh, uh, Halloween now, don't they? You know, they can't wait. They put the sales on and all of that, and they, they just be counting that money. You know, if anybody's going to have a Merry Christmas, it's the merchants because they make big money during that time. Mm -hmm. That's why it said the merchants of the earth have been made rich through her delicacy because they, they make big money on Christmas. Don't do too bad on Easter. You know, because everybody got to have a little new outfit. Mm -hmm. you, you remember. Don't act like you don't remember. <laughs> now, and then the, the Halloween that we ain't got up there, it, it's done become almost as big as Christmas now. Cause it, it used to be for the kids. They run around, do the little trick or treat, and then, trick or treat, give me some candy. But now, you see the adults. They got the Halloween parties everywhere, and they got to go buy them costumes. So now, the merchants of the earth, they have been made rich through her delicacies. Go ahead and read on. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying. Uh, now, this is the voice you need to listen to. Now, he said, I heard another voice from heaven saying. Go ahead and read on. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. Go ahead and read on. That ye be not partakers of her sin. Uh-huh. And that ye receive not of her plague. See what the Lord said. Come out of her, my people, that you do not be partakers of her sin. And that you do not receive of her plagues. Go ahead and read on. For her sins have reached unto heaven. Uh-huh. And God have remembered her iniquities. For her sins have reached up to heaven. And it said, God has remembered her iniquities. So therefore, the Lord said, if you are entangled in any of this stuff, then come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sin. Thank you, and I'm going to leave you right there. I can't think of anything else, so we'll stand, face Jerusalem, and close out. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power and the glory and the glory forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.